destroy me. Destroy me.
Hello, chat. I'm not, I'm not muted this time, right? We're good. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the there, there was, there was a moment earlier. Did that happen on stream recently? It's because... happened. It's happened like three or four times. I think I figured out why this keeps on happening. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, the reason, the reason it keeps happening is because, uh, hold on, I gotta resize you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, no. M move me. Yeah, yeah, Move I'm gonna put you, you I'm gonna put you right here because like on my screen I'm like basically spooning you and I, I can't it's so inappropriate uh, <laughs> <laughs> We we can't get the fanfic going that easily. No, we no, 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 no work for it. Yeah, my Twitter's open and I know it's because I wanted to show you something It's because we were talking about this before stream we were. No, we, get, we, we got here like half an hour early and we got everything ready in like five minutes and then the rest of the time we're just chatting. Yeah, yeah. so for those of you, for those of you who haven't seen this shit yet, <laughs> let me, sh uh, at the MTV Awards, I think like yesterday or the day, why does my Spotify keep pausing? That's very weird. Maybe if I window it? Uh, at, at the rewards, uh, Snoop Dogg and Eminem, uh, <laughs> rolled up with their fursonas, uh, and did a, and did a metaverse performance. Do you like the gorillas? Prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> you will never be Hatsune Miku. <laughs> these, these poor motherfuckers just want to be, like... Furry Hatsune Miku. <laughs> this is Why, just an bro? Excuse to be fur it's, this is just an excuse to be furries. Like, they, they just want to return to monkey. Motherfucker, just go and get a, go and get a fursona ref sheet. I this swear is... to God, it won't cost nearly as much. <laughs> this is my, this is my VR chat avatar. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to hear my, my sick rhymes? <laughs> <laughs> Hello chat. Uh today um that, was that that there was a little bit of a warm up. Uh I'm sorry if I'm I'm not going to be able to keep up with some of my uh subs very well. Sorry, I'm a little 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 fucking scattered today chat. I just had my caffeinated sparkling water <laughs> like a fucking degenerate. Let me throw that away. Um <clears throat> Uh, so I won't be able to keep up with the alerts very, very much. Uh, but thank you guys so, so, so much. Uh, thank you, Spartan Sheep. Thank you, Alan Water. Thank you, Sphinx Amunray. Thank you, Caution Heights. Thank you, Spectacles. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Beef Boy. Thank you, Wako. Thank you, Knight Drac. Thank you, Cronus. Thank you, Kodoragi. Thank you, Civil. And and you guys probably aren't going to hear from me that much. I have what? Don't don't <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, today I'm being joined. Uh, by Frederick Knudsen. Introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, no. No, okay. No? I'm fine, I will. Okay. Hi, I'm Frederick Knudsen. Um, I'm the person who makes Down the Rabbit Hole on YouTube, um, a series of documentaries about whatever my hyperfixation is for that time period. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it, it, I, I didn't want to make it, like, weird or cringe or anything, but, like, I've actually watched your videos for years, dude. Like, uh, <laughs> my favorite one was Final Fantasy House. <laughs> God, that, that, what, I'm, I'm so glad that I got to share that, and especially that I could find, like, more about it, but God, it's crazy to think that was four years ago now? Oh my was God, it? was it? I think it was. Shit's crazy. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was back when I was afraid to make anything longer than 20 minutes, I think. Like, I was worried, oh, people won't pay attention to it. And it's like, now I'm making a five-hour-long video. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, it's a certified banger, a certified hood classic. Uh... <laughs> I one of these days I have to introduce you to some of my weird niche internet experiences at some point. Uh, 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 like once there was this guy on Tumblr. Apparently, I ran into like a really kind of obscure lol cow, uh, and he, he's called the Gudra is female guy, uh, or, or uh, also known as slug fucker. Uh, and he is he is uh, a a niche Tumblr lol cow that specifically harasses people that draw male Gudra. <laughs> <laughs> and what? one 
and one time, one time I was playing through, uh, I don't know, fucking whatever game the Pokemon Gudra came out on, uh, and, and his name was Winston, and I drew my Gudra named Winston, and I posted him on Tumblr, and I got a reply from this guy that was like, um, gee, sure hope your Gudra isn't male, since Winston is a very masculine-sounding name. I hope you give her a more feminine name. And it took me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fun. <clears throat> oh my, you, you know, this reminds me of the person who got angry at someone for, like, having their OC be, um, be, what was it, male? I, I think it was. Mm. I I have it somewhere. Hold on. Is this it? Yeah, dude, link me. Where is it? Hold on. I let me let me check the link. So I my my friend Vex is, is they give me so much good stuff. Let me let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, while you're doing that, thank you so much for the ten gifted subs, Ultima. Thank you. Yes. Now's the time to call them out while I search through my. I don't know, backlog of wait. No, that's not it. Damn it. Oh my god, okay, Buy I guess time. <laughs> my Spotify is just broken. Give me a minute, I'm gonna put on a YouTube playlist instead since this just isn't happening. <laughs> Let's see, what about some um, nice electronic gems? I didn't find what I was looking for but? just yet, but I did find uh, the person desperately trying to have an AI generate his perfect woman. <gasps> oh my god, dude! I actually, uh... <laughs> I, I was hanging out in the Midjourney Discord last night, and I was just watching somebody repeatedly... Is this it? Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold I think on. this is it. I, I, I think that this is it. Oh, fuck. Okay, let me... I, I just watched someone repeatedly try to generate uh, Margaret Robbie in like a leather jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, uh, hold on, I hid it. I hid my window capture. Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking. <clears throat> okay, the other day the, in the image generation channel has been trying to generate his perfect woman for the past four hours, adding more prompt details every time, every single. <laughs> Desirable, gorgeous woman in her 50s, enjoying a pint at the pub, four stools down, no one between us, posh, wearing thin white gauze blouse, tailored for very close fit, unbuttoned black tabby cap, push a bra, thin white gauze mini skirt, tailored for very close fit, garnered fishnet hose, high heels, very long straight hair, red head, large bust, narrow waist, wide hips, trim fit, body curvy, full of very little makeup, nice muscular legs, looks cross, smiley, back to the counter, leaning against the counter, propped up on elbows, <laughs> revealing skin, side profile, ultra wide angle lens, I have a realistic 3D render. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, don't worry. There's more. There's like, more? As, as this person continued to fail, they kept trying to refine their search. Yo, Granny's kind of a baddie. Right? Over, like, she, she needs some sweet over-the-shoulder boulder holders. <laughs> oh my god. Granny! <laughs> Granny's out to play! Granny's on the hunt! <laughs> Granny about to order a speckled egg and hit on your girl. <laughs> I love... Hold on. Mon90053. Ooh, should I... Hmm, I could search him. I could search his recent messages on Midjourney right now. Is that oh, too oh, far? God. I, I, mm, I don't know. I, I, that, that comes very close to tapping the glass. I, I always tell my okay. Don't tap the glass. glass. Don't breach containment. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand the no breaching, breaching containment rule intimately. Mm -hmm, All right. Mm -hmm. I, I actually broke the rule once for the first time yesterday on stream. Oh uh, yeah. Where, yeah. I, th there was a person who's, okay a little background there's a person who is very sort of one of those weird health types like oh we're like eat my supplement and you know okay and, okay uh, um, and a man should strive to like build wealth and character you know just very oh, sort of weird oh i see like mm -hmm. a little bit like the, the kind of person that thinks about men a suspicious amount 
for being straight. I see, I see. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this person had a whole thread about how to sleep better because sleep is very important. <gasps> and Wait. then no, a... dude, I was <laughs> sorry. Go, go on. But I did. Okay, I you, was lurking you your stream that. at around that time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you did pop in. I did see you. I wasn't sure when you popped out, so mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you saw this. Um, but a Twitter account called what was it? Uh, Crazy Kong Facts, I think it is, made a parody of it, except instead of sleeping, it's shitting. <laughs> Please, like, what, what, what did he want? He wanted people to DM him the word shit for, like, <laughs> access to his fucking regiments or whatever. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Here, okay, I, I, found, I found the tweet thread making fun of the uh the sleep tips oh whoops i sent that to the wrong chat how did i do that um there uh this whole thread so the the person that they're making fun of will always post at the bottom of the tweet thread uh let me see where is it here we go they always say p.s i'm looking for a few more men who want a lean body high confidence and healthy testosterone two and a half hours required per week dm me body and i'll get you all the details <laughs> click oh, below no. to dm me body and this person at that so this person making fun of them said p.s right now i'm looking for five men who want to shit if you're okay investing two and a half shits per week you can do this dm me the word shit for details click below to dm me shit you hear that and boys if you shit fewer than eight times a day you're gonna lose <laughs> memory and gain weight that's all that's the they call that the the shit weight <laughs> and it'll add up it does this is why it i take laxatives with my breakfast coffee every single day <laughs> just downing them like fistfuls <laughs> to be an alpha <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first time i told my chat to tap the glass i told oh, my shit. chat to dm to radical funky kong facts the word shit oh fuck i wonder nah i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna go I, deeper I, I, into this guy's account <laughs> You tapped the glass, Fred. You broke containment. Oh, no. Ra Radical Funky Kong Facts is amazing. Yeah, uh, I know. It's like a don't, parody don't account. Tap, <laughs> don't tap the glass on Jack Bly. Um, because, I mean, look at that profile picture. It's... it's... Hold on. Okay. All right. That was a good warm-up. Uh, oh, fuck. I, I pick up so sec. I... Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It's not, it's not coming. Ah! <laughs> Okay, it's fine. <clears throat> are we okay? Are we balanced? Okay, that that's what this was all for. Are we balanced? I'm, how how I'm are our voices? Pensive. I'm balanced. Pensive. Hey guys, how are levels? Is the music a little bit too loud? Let me know. Junie, a little louder. Here, I'll get. <clears throat> I'll get. Close. I, I I think I I can also bring myself up a little bit. Uh, okay. Frederick was a little Some quiet. Okay, okay. Okay. Here, let let me bring myself up. Uh, Fred's audio is kind of crunchy. Um, kind of crunchy. Quiet. You sound you sound fine on my end. Okay. I feel like that's an OBS thing. It it also might just oh, a, a Discord thing. Cause yeah, I are found I'm a little quiet. I found like shit over Discord. It's no fun. Junie too loud? Okay, now I'm too loud. I, I think you were too loud before. I sound like I'm muffled. Really? Mm. 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 Still audible, though. Maybe just not, like, uh, you know. I'm turning up my mids a little bit uh, on my mixing board. There. Owl muffler. Just... <laughs> Here, maybe it's, I'm gonna check my audio settings super quickly. I, I don't know, I'm gonna be honest. All this kind of looks normal, so. Attenuation? Lower the volume of when someone is speaking. No, that's nothing. Okay, whatever. Uh, all right, let's go. <laughs> I think I think it'll be fine. You sound fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mids are loud, let me turn on my eyes. Yeah, compression is just a thing. I sound good, okay, good enough. Cool, I'll take it. That's very weird, because you really do sound fine on my end. I have no idea why people are saying 
Is there a, f no, I don't have any filters on my Discord audio capture. Here, I'm, I'm talking, I'm listening to myself now on stream. Ooh, yeah, I am crunchy. Uh-oh. Yeah, what in the world? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, what? Why am oh, I Oh, is it like, is it like inaudibly crunchy? Crun oh, God, like, crunchy. It, it is, it is audible, like, for some reason <sighs> on stream it's audibly crunchy. And I, I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna try something else. Uh, instead of doing a, a Discord audio capture, I'm just gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do a, like a desktop capture, basically. Okay. Let's do desktop audio. In that case, I am going to mute. This might be better. We'll see. Okay. Because I'm, I'm definitely not blowing out uh, Discord. I'm, I'm at like, I, I'm peaking at two thirds. Okay, uh, keep talking. Okay, hi, I'm talking. Hey, chat, does that hi, sound any out. better? Hmm? I think it does sound better. I, I just unmuted stream. No, no change, kind of oh, no, better. Oh, no, it's still crunchy. Still, still crunchy. The same. Maybe Ugh, is, pain. This happens when I'm with Mike, too, and I don't, like, I don't think it's on my end because I sound good to you, right? Yeah, you sound fine. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, well, uh, if there wasn't really any change, uh, uh, uh people are some people are saying it's better. It's honestly it's fine, I barely notice quiet. it. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just like a specific like five like audio junkies in chat. <laughs> no, I'm hearing it. I You're oh, hearing it. Whatever. Okay. All right. Well. I you know what I think it is. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to turn, turn myself my... down in discord or i'm just gonna turn myself down and maybe you turn the level up on um on your on obs mm, it's just you're already on and max on obs for me i oh oh is that a little bit better way better oh that is so weird is it oh is this better that's so weird because i okay if it's better let's go all way right better okay okay we got it Honestly, it may have been a connection issue. That's honestly what I think it is because I didn't do anything different. Hi, I'm so Larry, sorry okay, for the wait. Super good. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, <laughs> we got it. We figured it out. I look if 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 this stream is largely us talking, I want mm. I want it to sound nice. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys for your patience. He had a short duplication of his voice. That was me messing with my channels. Uh, it's yeah. done. Yeah, I I am peaking. I, I was peaking the levels, and I'm not sure how. I think that. Discord was boosting up the levels and and making it crackle. So if I'm not crackling anymore, then awesome. All right, mayhaps. I will I will talk gently and sweetly to chat. All right. Uh hello chat. Today we're going to be talking about the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, uh which I I don't know if we want to go in super blind, but the the Mystery Flesh Pit, Pit National Park is a a really really cool uh kind of a creative writing project. It's a fictional national park, obviously. Like <laughs> Not a not a real place, but it's. Uh, I'm still a bit louder than Fred. I'm so sorry. Give me one minute. Let me turn down my. This should be better. Okay. Okay. Here I'm talking. How do I sound? It's do really sound cool. It is really a uh, super super interesting lore. It's kind of cosmic horror y, and I'm excited. And, and <laughs> what do you Frederick... mean fictional people people in chat molding <laughs> that? like mystery flesh pit isn't real next you're gonna tell me that professional professional wrestling isn't real <laughs> and then, like people's brains break god have you ever oh, hold on there's one professional wrestler that i'm obsessed with i think her name is 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 mako or something and she she's an actual real failed idol so she became a a, a wrestler instead have you heard of her it's, it's I, hilarious i don't think i have and her gimmick is that she's dressed up as an idol. Maki Ito, thank you, thank you. The chat knows Maki Ito. Anyways. I, I, I'm going to look this up now. I wanna... Maybe maybe someday we'll do a deep dive on, on weird professional wrestling. <laughs> oh, actually, I, I already am planning on looking into a weird like professional wrestling group called, what was it? Party World Wrestling. That's Party what it is. Wrestling spelled with an like spelled R A S S L I N. Party <laughs> World Wrestling. But like 
I a, a friend of mine named Demi introduced it to me, and um, apparently, like, there's a whole subplot about like a planet eating worm. Like that's ju that's just this. I e love like, wrestlers with weird threat. lore. It's so awesome. <laughs> and like the, it, it goes into ice, like an, a frozen containment, and that like the wrestling ring for one event took place there. It's fucking wild. I don't know what's going on, and I'm going to do a whole stream trying to figure out what's happening. Ah, uh, that that sounds really fun. I'm I'm actually fucked up right now because that actually made me remember something. I was going to investigate a. Little little bit more at some point but I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to find it again but it was a it was a vigilante group but like not like a real vigilante group just to clarify it was really just a group of LARPers that would like walk streets <laughs> And they had, oh. like, a really obscure YouTube channel with, like, 500 followers. And I'm never going to be able to find it again. And it oh, fucks no, no, with no. me so um, much. What? No, Do you know? Um, okay. So I, I don't know if this is precisely who you were talking about. But Atrocity Guide did a video about um, about these vigilante superheroes oh my God, was specifically it in Seattle. Guide? Was it? Yeah. Hold on. Have you seen Atrocity? Yeah, you know Atrocity I, I, Yeah, Guide, I've seen right? Atrocity Guide. I might be thinking of a different yeah. group, though. Uh... Let me just look. The bitch of Looking it up right now. Very sad ending. Uh, Phoenix Jones. It's about Phoenix Jones, but she mm. talks about the whole superhero community. No, I, well. unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, I think it was a different obscure vigilante group. But uh -huh. it was just, it was very funny. Someday, someday I'll find it again and show it on stream. <laughs> I highly recommend Atrocity Guy, by the way. She she's a very good friend. Yeah. Uh, we actually I, I have a chessboard in the living room um with a uh a correspondence game that we've been playing. Atrocity Guide is a really, really cool YouTube channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's very chill, I I can vouch. Very peculiar person, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. Ready to actually like now that we're thirty Let's minutes in. Begin. <laughs> It'll be okay. We can go on tangents. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I I have I have completely cleared today. So how so for however long this goes, I'm mm. I'm here for it. Usually, I tend to get a little bit hangry at about five p.m. So we have about two and a half uh, hours before I get hangry, uh, and then I can probably get a snack and come back if we're still going. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm I'm happy to do that. I, like, fuck. I'll I'll order Chipotle. Frederick, please stop flexing that you have friends. It's mean to your chat. <laughs> Viscount's from my stream. <laughs> that that person's from my stream. I actually recognize a lot of names from my stream. That's good. Hello, hello, <laughs> Frederick. Uh, Frederick, chat. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, hi guys. I, I told my stream yesterday and th they were quite excited. That's awesome. Yeah. You'll see some Lauren emotes in there. God, I... The, the person who made my rig also did all my emotes and they're perfect. Like, look at this immaculate emote. Hold on. Oh, that's really good. That's really Froggy good. Froggy song. It's actually a reference to something um, that I accidentally discovered on stream once. Have you... Have you heard of RG Jubilee? RG Jubilee. I might need like one or two more cues. She's, uh, you probably don't. She's a very obscure out, like outsider artist that nobody knows about oh, uh, on YouTube. Okay. Just extremely uncanny. And she did like years ago, um, animations with frogs in them and just the do you want to do you want to do you want to see it do we want to see it do yeah wanna, let's let's take a look okay <laughs> I'm, I'm going to i'm going to time code it i'm going i'm going to give you the time code specifically to the thing that i discovered mm. that broke me let's see i'm gonna open up youtube videos with opera i think because I, okay. I i i've become very uh very skittish with my age very cautious uh, That's fair. Here we go. That's a good thumbnail, right? Okay. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? That's a great thumbnail. No, you know whose emotes I really... I, I gotta snipe this guy's emote artist, but do you watch Tomato? Mm-mm. God, dude. His emotes are really the best. They're just the most... Just the <laughs> most deeply cursed. <laughs> <laughs> I love Shia's emotes too. Oh god. What the fuck? 
Uh, why why opera not show on? That is why opera not show on stream. Okay, I found it. Let's make a big. <laughs> Lump. <laughs> okay, is this opera unmuted? Do I have any- Ah! God, sorry, this is- Ever since I started splitting my audio channels, it's become a mess. It's become an absolute <laughs> mess. Application audio it's capture. It's a little bit of extra work. Add- Oh! Oh! Opera! Opera capture! Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Okay, we're good. Even if I can't hear it, I hear it in my heart. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you might want to pause them pause your Spotify music. <laughs> I guess! Give me a minute! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, one moment. You can see my people from my chat coming out of the woodwork. What? What genre is this? It's... <laughs> so, so you know how there's penis music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frog this music. This might be sounding music. So oh. <laughs> I see. That's the best way I can describe it. Deranged core. Okay. Anal I, I want to call this analog core. That's what this is. <laughs> it is completely analog. Like, she, like, these are done on animation cells. Like, this is done old school. Wait, did, holy shit, sorry. I just realized how long this video is. Did she make the animations? Or did oh, she Oh, yeah, edit no, this is, this what? is all custom. Wait, I, no, I just- th This is part of a one hour long series. What the fuck? I feel like Foggy I'm looking 2000. into a- like an abyss! She has made multiple movies like this oh. that all feel the same way. Is she okay? <laughs> uh... I, I've, I've looked a little bit into her. She's, um... She's very, like, she's a very good evangelical Christian woman. I see. Um, who maybe has some issue, like, I, I don't know. She acts very childlike, I'll just say that. That, yeah, no, that, that I feel like I just gazed into the abyss. <laughs> interesting. Really interesting. She has. She's only gotten worse. Like her, it, she discovered animation programs, and it only got more uncanny. I, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'll remember to bookmark it. <laughs> anyway, mystery flesh pit. Mm. Feel like I feel like Whoa, that's mystery. a good sound. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I think I have another tangent. Hold on. All right, I'm ready. I'm here. No. All right, let's go. <laughs> What you, do, what, you didn't have one? It's like, no, oh, I'm I thought kidding. I had something in my pocket. <laughs> I was kidding. Oh, it's my joke. streams are like this. Like, I, my my streams go for about three hours usually, and, like, maybe an hour is given over to the main topic because I just get sidetracked so easily. Dude, I it, it's okay. That's, that's kind of how I like to do it. I like to wing it and then go on tangents when appropriate. Haha, <laughs> wing. Stop stalling. Fuck, you guys gotta- <laughs> I'm literally not. All right, it's time mm -hmm. for me. We, we, we've had, we've had our Vorspeise. We, we've had our, uh, what, what is it? What, what's the word? I, I'm, I'm learning German and the, the, and I'm doing the thing where I like remember the word in one language before the other. Uh, Warm up. Oh, hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, we, we had an appetizer. Now it's time for our meat entree. Mmm, God. All right. Tell me about this this tube of meat. Okay. This... So the reason I mm. wanted to show you this one first is because it was the first. This was everyone's introduction to the mystery flesh pit. And it, it went a little bit viral um, because it, I, I think it was posted on Reddit. And that's mm, and that's mm. where it got attention. But this is where people first learned about it, and uh, it shows a park trail engineer 
I think part of the reason that it gripped people was because there are already a lot of implications just with this. First, there's a park. Second, there's like it there are engineers for this park. And, and this is a trail, <laughs> like people go on the trail. Yeah, yeah, and and it looks extremely painful. Shout out to uh shout out to 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 woman by the way. If you know, you know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Junie. All I'm saying is that this is a pretty common medical procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that, Anyways. that's true. That's true. Um, and, and sometimes the doctors need cleats to be able to... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like the cleats? I, yeah. I, I mean, I imagine the flesh pit is very large. It probably doesn't feel much. Oh, don't I wonder worry. how we big will, the nerves are. We will get are. into. Mm -hmm. We will get into how large the flesh pit is. Mm -hmm. Let's we see. Will, Air is normally learn. breathable within the pit, but a reserve of oxygen is essential for unexpected drops in or uh, into noxious gas bladders or carbon dioxide filled lung pockets. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, there, and then there are, uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of, like, different information. Um, the, the one detail that I really like is that the multi-tool has a laser not only for carving new trails, but also to deter uh, territorial macrobacteria. Oh, sweet. I actually, I'm not sure I know about the macrobacteria. I am familiar, you... I'm familiar with the flesh pit. I know about the, uh, like, like, the crustacean, like, parasites that live inside of it. Uh, but I don't- I don't think I know about the macrobacteria! <laughs> you know what? Why don't- why don't we take a look at, um... Let me show see. Show me one of those Let's, boys! I- I will do more than show you one of those boys. I will show you an entire pamphlet on what to do if you encounter one. Let me see. Where'd it go? I had it. Here we go. Wildlife safety. All right. This is I, like, and there is more than enough for this stream, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, I I took multiple streams to cover everything, and even then, I was skimming some of it. So we have time. Your visit or, like, to the we have stuff. Mystery flash pit can be a pleasurable and rewarding experience, or it can be a time of vexation, distress, or even tragedy. Much depends on how you and your family observe these simple guidelines to ex avoid being designated hazards. <laughs> Hold on, show me that macrobacteria. I want to take a bite out of that pig boy. <laughs> he got fingies. He has fingies. He has fingies. Oh, got fingies. God. Wait. Uh... Hold on, macrobacteria, the most common organism encountered by park visitors during excursions into the park are the various subspecies of macrobacteria. While resembling their microscopic counterparts, these creatures are oh. multicellular, yeah? If, if you want to increase the size, you can click on it. Oh! Oh, there we go. Yeah. Reach sizes up to 12 feet across. The feeding mechanism is believed to be the cystic nutrient ganglions found within the mystery flesh pit around which the macrobacteria congregate in substantial numbers. Oh, like shrimp! Sorry, yeah. I've tried. Hi, uh, my name is Juniper. Want to hear about my pet shrimps, Actius? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but enough see. about me. Let's talk about. Let's my talk shrimp. about my shrimp. <laughs> I have seven mono shrimp and twelve red crystal shrimp, and they gather around uh, uh, food, and they're very adorable. <laughs> Let's see, uh, macrobacteria often migrate in colonies consisting of many dozens of individuals. Though passive in nature, their aggressively territorial feeding zones impose a risk to human life through suffocation via an oral groove or through caustic fi f bi bifurcation. Okay, so I'm assuming it's, they're uh, toxic on the inside, right? I, the, the, the caustic bifurcation, I think, is a nice way of saying they will melt you in half. Oh! Because to bifurcate something means to break it into two parts, and caustic means uh, like uh, something that's acidic or will eat through um, or will burn through something. I see. Do they have like a permeable membrane? Like, can you can they can they suck you in there? Because I, I mean, I know they. 
I, I guess they can definitely try suffocation well, by a oral groove. Um, bacteria usually will have some sort of feeding apparatus that, like, they, that they will consume. Like, they'll have a mouth. Mm. So these boys also have mouths. I want to know about the fingies, but first I want to know about the compound surface fauna. Oh, um, yeah. Rare occasions, yeah. abyssal cope, cope <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced copepod. But... I, I, I know. <laughs> and other park wildlife will venture outside the pit and pull surface animals such as deer, livestock, etc. into the pit. If not eaten by park fauna, these animals may undergo a fascinating phenomenon known as anatomical amalgamation like me. Yay. Just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> They're trying to give you friends. Oh, this process, which is not fully understood by park science, has resulted in the creation of a compound organism, which is a hybrid of constituent surface animals. No two are alike, though the resulting physiology often results in similar conditions, such as partial fusing of major body elements. Because of the gruesome and haphazard nature, they usually don't live beyond a few hours or days. In the extremely unlikely event that you encounter an amalgamation containing one or more human constituent organisms, contact a part ranger immediately. Damn, bro. Extremely unlikely. Of unlikely. Course. I mean, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the number of missing people are constantly going up or anything. <laughs> oh, oh, that that is the least of the concerns. You do you don't know about the 2007 incident, do you? Ah. Uh... Is that is that the big one? Yeah. I know the about big the one. big one. Okay, yeah, good. Good. <laughs> oh, we got we got shrimp. Shrimp. We boys. have shrimp. Abyssal copepods, as the name suggests, abyssal shrimp avoid lights, machinery, other <laughs> humans. Uh, uh, they reside deep within the mystery flesh pit. The predatory is by hunting other life forms within the pit. They have chitinous carapaces coated in waxy secretion, which allow them to easily slip and travel within the pit. Are they edible? Can I eat them? Um, I think actually someone asked that. Um, I, I don't think that much in the pit is terribly edible. Whoa, what a waste. Imagine imagine taking like a big, like a steak filet of giant abyssal shrimp. You know, it's... Mm. I, did, I, did I send you the throat tickler? You did, yeah. Yeah, rich people will eat fucking anything. <laughs> like, they'll... True. Like, What's... they, they might... <laughs> Hmm? Once you're rich beyond a certain point, you just gotta do something to make you feel anything again. <laughs> right. I, oh god, yeah, I, I like how some people in chat are like, what's the throat tickler? Some, you some would know. be better off not knowing. <laughs> um, Maybe someday we'll talk about it. I, <laughs> um, I remember Mike, at, Mike told me something real. Hmm. Uh, there is rum made from elephant dung. Oh, Hmm. Yeah, mm, I not into it. Not into I, that. I see. My theory is that like some some people in Africa were like, "Oh man, let's make some rum from elephant shit." Those Americans <laughs> will drink fucking anything. <laughs> let's sell it to the rich tourists. We're gonna make so yep. much money off these fucking chumps. The, the, exactly, and like the, I, I think my favorite part is the way that they describe the flavor. They say it's mm -hmm. earthy. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I simply would choose not to. I simply wouldn't. How about don't? <laughs> Let's see. Can I, <laughs> can I use the abyss? to merge a young girl and a dog into Stop. a chimeric amalgamation. <laughs> Two nipper one Oh, play. cute! Right? Wait, oh, hold on. It's, it's actually bigger if I don't click on it. Look at this little... Oh, look at this little feelers. Mm, very much adapted for a, a deep, deep cave survival. I imagine oh, they're yeah. probably blind. Um, yeah, um, most most stuff in the mystery flesh pit is blind. I see, I see. 
I, yeah, if you see flora or fauna within the park and it does not appear to notice you, back out of sight and change your course. Move out of the area or quietly observe at a safe distance without approaching or otherwise disturbing it. Disturbance is evident whenever wildlife change their behavior because of you. If it stops eating and looks up or raises its antennae or secretes scent enzymes or begins making territorial clicks while trying to locate you, you are too close. Oh, echolocation. Yeah. Something like that, maybe. That's fucking, that's fucking cool. Their tolerance of human presences at distances further than 200 yards. Each creature is different. Use cameras or endoscopes when possible. Allow migrating bacterial colonies to pass by your camp undisturbed. Oh, okay, huh. They just, they're just schlorping along. They're just... <laughs> They are just. I wonder how the. There, is there a picture of a bacteria anywhere? Uh, I don't know if there have been. If there are any photos of I, the macro bacteria. <laughs> I, 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 I want to see how they move. Like, are they just big, big jelly cubes that just. Just sort of pull themselves uh, let me along? Let's see. Well, there <laughs> is. that. There is an interesting little bit about um, one of my favorite things in the mystery flesh pit the amorphous shame the amorphous shame yes let's take a look at the amorphous shame the name was earned by the appearance of the creatures oh. which seem to be living collections of loose organs in reality amorphous shames have simply been shaped by the forces around them in much the same way the contemporary domestic dog breeds barely resemble their wolf ancestors what the fuck there's sense of Isn't evolution beautiful? <laughs> Isn't nature beautiful? <laughs> I love the miracle of nature so much. A common ancestor of the amorphous shame, the long-tailed weasel, enters an orifice of the superorganism. Okay, so over millions of years, it adapted. <laughs> it adapted. To what? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, I'm. I, I mean, if it's not actually providing any ad, like survival advantage, I, why keep? I it? guess so. It extends a siphon uh, beyond the flesh burrow to slurp up liquid aminos and proteins, which grow in leak from nutrient sacs within the flesh pit's anatomy. By losing eyes and other organs, the amorphous shame has cleverly reduced its caloric metabolic requirements. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, it's just a weasel. Mm -hmm. Let's slap its wet, gross body around and pet it. <laughs> you, know, you know what this reminds me of here? I'm sending you something. Forbidden Capri Sun. Uh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Here, I, I, I gotta I gotta plug this into opera really quick. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the fucking stupid. Where is it? Fuck! I don't like the way my skin feels on my body. Do you like the way your skin feels on your body? Take it off. Take you don't. It off. Why don't you pull it off? <laughs> pull off your skin. Why don't you pull it off? <laughs> pull off your skin. <laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> Maybe, I hate I this thing. Help. Oh, I need wait. you to hook onto my cock and balls <laughs> and pull real tight. Wait, Can you do what? That? Just it's still toe. playing. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it auto, no, it auto played something. And drive away. <laughs> yeah. it, it auto played. Can you do that torture me, my Mater? cock and balls. Mater, please. Made her please. If you don't my cock and balls, I might do something bad. I might hurt people, Mater. <laughs> you want that? I might blow Radiator Springs. I up. need an outlet, Mater. Do you want that, want that Mater? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. So if I don't torture my cock and balls right now. Thank you, Mater. <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> I think 
sometimes think... sometimes you just gotta let YouTube autoplay. Sometimes it's just fate. I I think the the fact that it's crunched down so badly mm -hmm. just improves it. Mm -hmm. It has the it's it has like, the zoomer touch. Yes, it, it gives it that warm quality. Homemade, homemade, comfy. Yeah. Yeah, like like a hot tub filled with bacteria. <laughs> Like a like a pocket of weasel organs, yeah. com comfortably <laughs> sipping away at amino acids. I'm just imagining Bear Grylls going into the mystery flesh pit and being like, "Oh, you, you see this sticking up out, out of out of the meat? <gasps> this is an amorphous shame. You can grab this and pull it right out. It'll slide <laughs> right out, and then ah! it just like, bites into it." Ah! <laughs> Fucking do it! <laughs> uh, I can't take this, man. I can't take this. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the amorphous shame is having a great time. Aww. Like he just gets to sit there and slurp up nutrients and play Fortnite all just day. Just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> it's no that that's you and like sparkling water. <laughs> Don't expose me, man. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I, I invite you, a humble guest, onto my stream. <laughs> Your first mistake was giving me a modicum of power. <laughs> so the macrobacteria have fingies. Where uh, are the, the fingies? That, that's, um, the, the macrobacteria don't have fingies. The oh. abyssal copepods have. Oh, fingies, they do. So. They have. Yeah, they're oh. the ones with grabbies. Yeah, oh, I, I'm no. sorry. I, I I misspoke. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Love, Death, and Robots? Uh, I've seen the first season. Oh shit! Is that the one with like the Santa Claus monster that no, has like hands I, on its face? I, I did see that one. I did oh, okay, see okay. that short. That's kind of what I'm cute. imagining. Yeah, I thought he yeah. was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was so cute. So Are you cute. kidding me? I, I love... Okay, one of my favorite aesthetics is friendly monsters. I love... I, I, I do. I really love, like, mm. friendly monsters that are, like, really horrifying looking. Yeah, it's like... we. You're my friend now. We're having soft tacos later. Aww. <laughs> can, can we have pancakes? Can we go to IHOP? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Let's see. What about uh, um, hmm? uh, uh, so so? This is a national park that a lot of people basically go on tours into. Uh, yes. Are there like a, oh. like guest centers? Hold on. Yes, there's a guest center. But before we get to that, mm -hmm. I have something special for you. <gasps> something special. All right. Yeah. Oh. These oh. are scientific illustrations of the Permian Basin superorganism megafauna. <gasps> Fingies! Why Fingies. does he have those? For grabby. For grabby. <laughs> no! Get them so Put them away. Put those fingies away right now, sir. I yeah, want your toes. <laughs> <laughs> How, how big are these a fellas? Average. Uh, let me see. <laughs> average they, Junie's I've, watcher. I was gonna say like the average Tumblr ask user. Like, <laughs> hey, so can we see? Can can I, I? I really like your art. Do you think that okay. you could? Do you think that you could draw your character without shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was maybe a fifth. <laughs> How how big is this fella right here? Uh, this fella. Um, let me see. Is there a human for scale? Yeah, Where's banana. Scale? Let's see. From what I remember, these things are big enough to pro. Uh, fuck. It, pros? Is that the right word? Pose danger to humans. Yeah. 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 No, they they are dangerous. I think that these can get up to be a couple times larger than humans. Okay. Okay. Okay, abyssal copepods get up to school bus length, someone in chat saying, and I choose to believe that. I'm... I <laughs> Imagine this man coming up to you and just, <laughs> just like wiggles his fingers in your face. That's a smiling fringe yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
just starts I would... feeling your face. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. I really like the stinging uh, uh, triocanth here. I really like this fella with the corkscrew feelers. He's very cute. Yeah. I want to know which one of these would like taste the best. Ooh, ooh, what the hell? A venomous shamble. Yeah. Oh, a I, Venice, I really Venice like shamble. Venus, Venus, yeah. Venus shamble. Or Venice, yeah, yeah. Venice. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I would pop one of these uh, macrobacteria straight into my mouth. I would barbecue it, okay. roast it up, make it nice, a uh, uh, golden brown, crispy. Smoke them. Oh my God! Yes. Oh yeah, and then just like the the skin would peel right off and be crispy. Oh, I bet it would like I bet it would like pop kind of like like a popping yeah. boba, but like savory. <laughs> like like a yeah. barbecue chicken, but popping boba. <laughs> but boba tea, but with macrobacteria instead of tapioca. <laughs> no, hold on. And they're still I have, alive, like they're swimming around. I have a scheme. I have a scheme, Okay, Frederick. okay, I'm Okay, listening. all right, we need to get some of these macrobacteria. We need to uh, start breeding them and raising... I, like, okay. I, I imagine breeding wouldn't be very hard since Farm. they're asexual anyways. Right, um, right. Uh, get them on, like, a like a sugar water diet. Mm -hmm. uh, flavors. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm absorb, I'm absorb, uh, uh, like fruit, fruit fra flavored liquids, or like like sugar mm -hmm. water, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And we will make boba butt alive and horrifying. It's, like, <laughs> it's it's like Kobe beef style raising, except for bacteria. Yes, I'm, I'm that's the it. idea. I'm I'm here for it. Personally. We could get so rich off of this. Oh my god, yeah. And then like, and no, th then you know what would happen? We wouldn't say what it is, like, and then people would learn, and then there would be massive lawsuits, and we'd end up in the news, and we'd make even more money. Yes, bad press is good press. Yes. So many people are gonna want our fruit flavored yeah. bacteria. Yeah, and it's like, oh well, did did. Is it uh, is it unethical? Could you really say that they're living? Mm, like, yeah. I, I mean, if you eat yogurt, if you eat yogurt, you're eating virtually the same thing, yeah. uh, unless there yeah. is somehow a, a, a division in your psyche where if an animal is a certain size, it's no longer okay to eat. Right. No. See, at that point, I'd like do the sigma male thing and swallow a a macro bacteria and be like all those little baby bitch bacteria in my gut are about to be shown what for like survival <laughs> of the fittest motherfuckers <laughs> i would swallow a chihuahua <laughs> this is very quickly turning into she swallowed the spider to catch the fly <laughs> <laughs> but just mystery flesh pit style. Not for any particular reason. I think just to prove a point. Just, just <laughs> it's a power move. <laughs> like, you, like you, you go on a date, and it, like you just bring a dashand in in a bag, and like you sit down, and this other person asks, so, so, uh, what, well, what do you do for a living? You just completely wordlessly pull the dashand <laughs> out, or the chihuahua out of the bag and swallow it whole like you unhinge your jaw hey hey why are you crying why are you crying D do you have something against this is it be like do you eat yogurt you sick fuck do you just not like seeing powerful women <laughs> <laughs> i'm out of here i can't stand this weak pussy shit <laughs> you failed the test <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a really good way to land you someone who's going to like die while climbing an obscure mountain in the alps and like leaves you everything like th <gasps> this is long-term financial planning oh no that you, you i think i think you're on to something there Someone rich and also deeply deranged. <laughs> right, yeah. It, yeah it, it just, we're coming back to the same thing of, like, people so obscenely rich that they'll just do the dumbest shit because they can afford to. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh my oh, god, dude, like eating octopus. Oh, that shit makes me so... Ugh, I hate no, it. You would, you, would, you would get the first person mm. who, like, would try to scale a mountain with, um, with like, quadcopter assistance. Like, that's the kind of dumb motherfucker you would get <laughs> if you swallowed a chihuahua whole on the first date. Well, maybe like a really small chihuahua. I don't think, maybe not <laughs> not a big one. I, pr I probably I'm, wouldn't be able to. Now, now we're just starting to get into Monty Python territory. So what floats? Very small rocks. <laughs> very a, small the, chihuahua. Theoretically, a very, I, I could swallow a very small chihuahua <laughs> if I bred them to be very, very small. <laughs> I guess sand, does sand, well, uh, sand kind of floats. That's like a really small rock. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. No, like the, 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 my, the thing I hate most about that bit from Monty Python is very small rocks will stay on top of water. I don't know if you could say they float, but they are kept they will on top of water I think they because need, of surface tension. Yeah, yeah, they will. Or, or um... Or they need like air pockets or something, just because I've I've had to fill aquariums that I have filled with like sand, uh, and that shit floats and it's a fucking pain in my asshole. Right. Yeah. Like that. There will be bubbles that stick to them. Yeah. 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 I, I grew up with an aquarium. So. Mm -hmm. It's I... a it's a horrible <laughs> it's a horribly addicting hobby. It's. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's so, so lovely. Dangerous. Although it was very funny when my family thought they were buying a Cory catfish and accidentally got a Placostomus oh, and were shit. saddled with it for the next like fifteen years. Those things can get up to like three feet long. Oh no, it was the it was the last surviving member of the aquarium because mm. like they did my dad got really attached to it. Oh we, na we named we named her Hoover. Hoover? Yeah. Wait, why? <laughs> Is there a backstory? Because, because they're a bottom feeder. Okay. Well, they're they're a sucker fish. They're, they they hoovered up everything that fell they to the bottom. They hoovered up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought for some reason I was like, the like vacuum. the president? <laughs> no, no, like the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh, okay. You should have named her Kirby. You should think it over better next time. Ah, uh, clear, clearly. Oh, no, you guys, I'm losing my gamer cred. Yeah. I guess. Fuck, do you remember the Kirby MLM? My- What? Fuck, my- Oh my- Yeah, okay, so, uh, the vacuum cleaner, like, it was like an oh. MLM where they would go door to door and, like, uh, try to sell Kirby yes. vacuums. Yes. My, uh, parents collectively had, like, 15 of those. <laughs> I, I, they oh they eventually God. got rid of all of them, but like as a as a young jaded zoomer, like I just had to shake my head in disapproval, you know. <laughs> I there there is definitely a category of person that earnestly buys those products, mm -hmm. um, and, and they overlap a lot with the same people that attend self help seminars. Those things are like two grand each. I, listen, yeah. I don't know. All I'm saying is that they sold them all so we don't have like 10 or 15 anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't know how much they sold them for. Do you want me to text my mom and ask her? I I mean, I'm a little curious now. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Uh, you wanna find uh, more, more, more slide, more content? No, absolutely. You were asking about um, how Guest one... areas, yeah. Yeah, guest areas. Well, how about we Entrances, visit- Entrances, yeah. The lower visitor center. Yeah, I, I think like if we could do this linearly, like uh, like entrance, sit down in- uh... Oh. Maybe, if you, maybe. Yeah, if you, okay, you know what? In that case, let's mm -hmm. do something else first. Okay, sure. Um, why don't we start up at the top? Here we go. All right. This is a cross section of the very top of the mystery flesh pit, showing the entrance and the way that uh, the opening is dilated, is kept dilated so that people can go down and enter. Oh, God. Hold on. Yeah. Here, let me... Uh, I'm texting my mom right now. I'll okay, let you okay. know. Okay. Well, I'll point out, um, I, I think the, th the thing that stands out to me the most 
Uh, if you click on it and then zoom in, you can get some really nice detail. Um, but you have long cables that are pulling at the opening to the pit, and you can see you can see it being stretched open. Ugh, nah, dude, that's f <laughs> just like, huh? Just like surgery, I guess. Look, you. Look, you, if you want to, sometimes if you want to do something, you got to train up to it, okay? <laughs> That's it. <I> guess. <laughs> oh, oh no, I've seen some... Fred, I've seen horrible things. <laughs> oh no. I... That, you know what? I don't want you to expound on this because this could splinter out into any number of things. And I'm not sure I want to discover where it goes. I've seen horrible things, Frederick. It's shit that I would never talk about on stream. All right, the text has been sent to my mom. We'll just okay, uh, wait perfect. and see if she answers us sometime this now, stream. <laughs> so, something important that I'm not sure is stated on this mm. is, um, oh, actually, wait. Oh. Yes, the spasm fits. The spasm fits. On occasion, lucky park visitors may observe a natural phenomenon as fascinating as the flesh pit itself. In what scientists think to be an immune response to continued dilation, the pit entry orifice begins to violently choke and spasm against retaining braces. This impressive display of vigor, which may last as long as 20 minutes, often features otherworldly tectonic carnal moans from deep within the mystery flesh pit, which can be heard for miles in all directions. You can view this exciting spectacle from the outdoor amphitheater near the gondola pavilion. These choking fits usually occur following extensive engineering improvements within the pit. Check at the visitor center for scheduled engineering developments. Due to gastric ejector from the pit entry orifice, eye protection is recommended when directly viewing a spasm pit. Yeah, so here's one thing that's always kind of thrown me uh, about it that was sort of confusing for me to visualize was that, mm. like, uh, the way it describes how it, like, chokes and, and, and spits and stuff, I kind of mm. thought the entrance was, like, like a mouth of, like, a really tiny head. <laughs> but I, I see it's just it's just a pore and it's a... Uh, uh, spasming and choking in a way that we wouldn't be able to comprehend with our shitty um not flesh pit bodies well i mean there is it, it does respire oh okay and in fact we can uh, we can look at that next after um uh, after we take a closer look at uh the entry orifice i love uh why, why don't you read for us the um the different trails that we can go on in the mystery flesh pit. Of course. Here, let me uh, let me find. Uh, my mom just texted me back. She okay. just responded with "want to call." I'll call later <laughs> this week. So I guess we're not getting our answer right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to find the the trails here. Uh, and also some of my OBS overlays covering it. So give me just a second. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, there's a variety of guided and unguided tours depending on your time, interest, constitution, and physical ability. Your first step for any pit tour is the lower visitor center where park rangers can answer questions about the flesh pit where you may rent specialized gears and equipment. Uh, you got the bowels of the earth route, very aptly named. Uh, the mm. basic tour through the mystery flesh pit. It's a, about an eight mile self-guiding stroll through many large and famous features like the Thor's rib cage, Septum Falls, God's mistake, and <laughs> oyster shape. <laughs> oh no, wait, hold on. That is That's an oyster. Ew. <laughs> Okay. 
Highly unusual and immense, the Bowels of the Earth route is a must-see tour for all visitors to the park. Gondola rides from the surface take you directly into the reinforced lower visitor center. Relatively level, well-lit, completely enclosed trails make this the ideal tour for visitors with walking difficulty or those with small children. Where, where is God's mistake? I need to see God's mistake. I, I, I think, uh, you know what? I think that God's mistake is labeled on a higher view uh map let me take a look if because th there is a diagram uh-oh boys uh looks like i <laughs> oh no uh selling price for the old ones was about a hundred dollars with attachments newer ones go up in value however i couldn't give them away most went to the landfill oh Anyways, God. what's what's up? What's up with God's mistake? Uh, I'm looking for it here. You know what? If you want to look for it with me, um, I'll, I'll show you the diagram I'm looking at right okay, now. Okay, all right. Here, uh, let's open let's that boy up. There's a moisture crop, and then uh, something. Oh. Yeah, there it is. God's mistake. Uh, sort of in the center, next to some bone, just above the chyme bladder. God's and to the and uh, below and to the left, or it's just below Thor's rib cage, uh, past the sand gullet. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oh, hold on. I actually really want to take a little look at this map here. Uh, okay. So here's the entire organism, and it just sort of like peeks out, like right there, a little little pore right at the surface. Uh, moisture crop, hard palate, lower moisture crop. Oh, sweet, we got bone. Love it. Yeah. More bone. Just an expanse of bone. Where? Oh, oh, I see. And um, you can see where the lower visitor center is as well. Uh, it's just below the lower moisture crop. I see. Okay. Lower visitor and construction site are both right here. God's mistake. Huh. There it is. Huh. I wonder what it is. It's just at the end of the um, tunnel. I forget. I forget precisely. It's okay. Uh, Fondue it's, it's village. Ew. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. We got another route. The guts and giddy up. It's a self-guiding tour available to visitors with limited spelunking and or diving experience in good condition. It's about five miles uh, it follows the original explorer's route, entering the sand gullet from the base of the lower visitor center. The route descends over 750 feet into the pit, following slippery and narrow flesh tunnels through a large dorsal organ called the trunk. Okay, so it's through the sand gullet. And I don't see any where any of the rest is, unfortunately. Oh, oh, there's the, there's the trunk this. organ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highlights along this route include a desiccated copepod nest, a prehistoric Ooh. whale carcass, the somber circus clown chymus, and fondue village. Can I... <laughs> can I dip... Can I dip my shrimp in the fondue with the village? <laughs> that's what's important to me right now. That's... that. That's like... Uh, again, no. Th this is Elon Musk. After he downs a throat tickler, he's like, "I want to go and take like <laughs> dip abyssal copepod meat into the fondue." What the hell is a chimus? What is a Chima circus? Okay. Oh, chimus. What uh, is oh, a circus do, clown chimus? Please do, do, help. Oh, do you do you want to know about the circus clown chimus? <gasps> I I was hoping. I was specifically <laughs> hoping that you would ask. I, I guess have it right here for you. So for for those who do not know, chyme is um, the name of partially digested food in your intestines. It looks like a colorful ice cream birthday cake covered in a glazed frosting. This calcified formation is anything but festive. In 1976, a group of performers accidentally fell into the upper maw of the entry orifice while the soft flesh of the pit throat Somewhat cushioned the performer's fall, the unexpected dilation of an epiglottal fold allowed them to slide into the then unreinforced area of the pit. Rescue personnel were able to locate the performers inside a digestive sack a few hours later, but by that time, all 50 stunts people had already been digested by the pit. 
rescue bit personnel partially digested. partially digested. Yep. Uh, uh, rescue personnel cut them out, correctly guessing that many were still alive. An experimental antacid spray was charged on top of the gooey, shrieking mound, but it was too late. Instead of reducing the acidic effects on the partially digested bodies of the performers, the experimental compound flash calcified into the multicolored formation you see in front of you. Though hauntingly beautiful, the circus clown Chimus is a somber reminder why it is always important to observe all safety instructions and to always stay on the marked trails while visiting the interior of the mystery flesh pit. This is like an extreme version of that advertisement where like they crack an egg and fry it in the pan and then like throw it across the room. They're like, this is your brain on drugs. <laughs> it's like, this is what's going to happen if you don't follow safety instructions. Somebody in chat said 50 dead germas. <laughs> If we go deep enough into the pit, we may even find a live one. <laughs> Is that a small enemy copepod? <laughs> All right, let's see. The swallowed hole tour. <laughs> the amorphous germa, god damn it. <laughs> A two-hour ranger-guided swallowed hole tour goes through several scenic and undeveloped organ sections. Departing from the lower visitor center, the tour descends to the deepest portions of the mapped pit anatomy. Although not as difficult as the guts and giddy up route, this one-mile tour does require park visitors to descend and later climb an eight-story high, actively peristaltic esophageal passage esophageal Thank as in you. Esoph like <laughs> esophagus esophageal yeah. passage rangers are available throughout the mark trails to help you with information first aid and coping mechanisms all primary facilities within the mystery flesh pit are hair medically enclosed air conditioned and structurally reinforced temperatures within unenclosed areas of the pit are normally 98.6 degrees fahrenheit year round with humidity ranging from 80 percent to full saturation Hey, I want to know, but <laughs> what kind of coping mechanisms do you think these park rangers have? If I if I approach a park ranger and be like, yeah, ooh, woo, can I put my head in your lap? <laughs> oh, no, the, the park rangers consist exclusively of furries and Tavor. No! Tell me I'm fucking wrong. You tell me I'm fucking wrong. Oh, my God. Wait, that, no, that checks, that, that, che that checks out. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That That is the true horror of the flesh pit. <laughs> Hold on, boys. We have lodging and dining options. We got the uh, Marriott Hotel and Suite. Uh, that's a real place, right? Oh, yeah. Hard Rock Cafe, yeah, too. Yeah, the Marriott Hotels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Shh. you for choosing Marriott Hotels. God, I got so many spam calls from like, those scammers. Like... Literally, I stopped picking up my phone because every time it was either like someone trying to uh, being like, we're calling about your car's extended warranty or thank you for choosing Marriott Hotels. Uh, let's see. We got, hey, we got a pool. It's got a nice outdoor pool. Nice uh, uh, cool off because this is in Texas after all. Very, very nice. A lounge, a spa, a convention center, and an arcade. Oh, do we have any? Uh, okay, just Hard Rock Cafe and Chili's. I, I guess not. They don't really have a whole lot of exotic food. I think, like, they... A nice view, too. They, they, tried, they tried cooking the meat, but it's, like, gamey and, and not, not good. Mm. Mostly gristle. That's a shame. Yeah, it's too bad. Um, well, at, at least there are other wonderful things that you can consume inside the mystery flesh pit. Well, I'm such excited. as amniotic spring water. Oh, is it like? <laughs> is it like good though? Oh wait! Oh oh! It is so much better than good. Would you like to visit the amniotic springs? You got me a little spooked. Let's go. The, and... This is this is actually where where the furries go. <laughs> Let's see. We got amniotic thermal springs for relaxation and rejuvenation. 
Uh, located deep within the warmer crypts of the Mystery Flesh Pit, the Amniotic Thermal Springs are renowned worldwide for their delightful effects on the mind, body, and spirit. Many people traveled across the country to seek out the mystic properties of the healing baths, which are rumored to heal ailments and cure disease. Many others, calling them pleasure domes, enjoyed the aphrodisial effects of the amniotic fluids. I, I don't, I don't want to go to the horny hot springs. I oh, this is absolutely the horny hot springs. No, absolutely. In fact, what one of one of the baths is called the libido bath. No! That that is that is the one uh, with the most potent fluid. <laughs> oh no! Wait. Uh, all right. Well, we got some uh, instructions if you plan on using it. Uh, number one, please store all personal belongings in the provided lockers within the bathhouse. Please enjoy the full contact benefits of it. Please utilize the provided showers before and after using the bath. Just like any pool, you got to keep your disgusting human filth out of the sex pools. <laughs> Don't disturb any structural, or electrical, or mechanical infrastructure in or around the baths. Bat... Oh, to the main ba <laughs> in the main bath are welcome. Visitors to all other baths must be 18 or older. No, dude. All right, please don't claim or reserve lawn chairs. Man, even in the mystery flesh pit, people are fucking. Uh, 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 oh my god, the word is evading me. Uh, call of duty. Listen. Call call duty. Uh, the call. <laughs> L listen, listen, they might be in the flesh pit, but it's still a bunch of white people in Texas. They will complain to you about you taking their lawn chair. Camping! Thank you! <laughs> <They're> ca <laughs> Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> Please remain oh, quiet, no. courteous, and respectful to fellow bathers by limiting displays of affection while within the main bath. No, for special information regarding the libido bath, please see the conduct and consent pamphlet. Good for them. Mm -hmm. Good for them. That's lawsuits waiting to happen. Oh yeah. The I the, the but the amniotic spring fluid is amazing. On the right it says, though it is commonly called amniotic fluid, mm. the semi-opaque, slippery, luminescent liquid produced within these organic thermal springs uh. has little in common with the fluid produced by pregnant mammals. Park geobiologists use the term ballast, as it is theorized that the fluid is produced by the mystery flesh pit as a way to regulate the endocrine systems of the superorganism. Oh, that makes sense. Since its discovery, amniotic spring fluid has been a highly sought after resource and is tightly regulated by the National Park Service. The unique chemical properties of the liquid have been shown in clinical studies to mildly reverse cell degradation due to factors such as cancer or aging. Many park visitors report additional benefits of bathing such as decreased joint pain, healthier skin, weight loss, and vision improvement. A secondary and infamous property of amniotic spring fluid are the psychoactive and aphrodisiacal effects it has on those who consume or topically apply it. Bathers describe a gentle euphoric sensation when soaking in higher potency springs, with the effects of concentrated exposure being well documented by several best-selling short films, mm. many of which are available for purchase by request in the Upper Visitor Center gift shop. Beyond the physical sensations, visitors often claim that they develop deep emotional bonds with those they interact with while in the thermal springs. Aww, wholesome! I... sure. Amniotic spring <laughs> fluid is safe to eat and drink and has enjoyed limited exposure as an additive to a variety of popular consumer foodstuffs such as the seasonally available coca-cola heartthrob <laughs> feel good mcflurry and even a ballast based cordial liquor coca-cola heartthrob oh yeah you want to see a can of it yes <laughs> here it is taste the coke sensation no, no, chat. They only let kids in the spring where it's like less concentrated. Ah! Why is it horny? I do, what do you think that it's most used for? Yeah, you're right. Hey, let's rewind a fucking second. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah. Bathers describe a gentle euphoric sensation. The effects of concentrated exposure being well documented by several best-selling short films. What the fuck does that mean? 
What? I... How is it documented? <laughs> is it possible for something to be doc a documentary and smut? Wait a minute, I've seen Taxi Driver. <laughs> A gift shop i won't I, I won't settle for this debauchery <laughs> at least put it in a separate <laughs> shop god <laughs> new new tag on erotic roleplay sites oh commercial extraction area yeah of course it's uh hmm. it, it's slorped up and and put into things just slorped up mm-hmm Oh, I love that they sort of have like these nice ramps leading into it. I, I, I if I if I was in charge here, all of these places would have like pretty uh, uh like like pretty yellow lamps all over, you know, like maybe floating, maybe some like lotus flowers. Yeah. Beautiful. I I don't think anything that you will do will change the fact that you are in like a meat compartment. Yeah. I mean, that's just... <laughs> Yeah! You gotta play into it. We got the lover's squeeze here. Ew. Oh yeah, the these names are lovely. Ew. Wait, what are these? Oh, are these just- uh, is it like a staircase? Or is it like automated? Oh, uh, where? Uh, sorry, like the-, the Oh, yeah. that- I, I think that's just a ramp, or like stairs. Mm -hmm. Um... But, like, in order to get to the other baths, you have to, like, swim and crawl through these tunnels. Like, these meat tunnels. Aww. Yo, look, there's a little baby one here. It's undeveloped. <laughs> it's, it's it's growing up. Soon it'll be a big sex pool. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on. My playlist. <laughs> My YouTube playlist is so good right now. What the hell? I'm, I'm leaving it like that. This is good. All right. Sac sweet saxophone. I wonder what it I tastes like. Cause I, I recently tried I the uh, um, oh syrupy sweet with hints of amaretto and rose water. I tried the uh, the Coke Starlight recently. Uh, I think that one was taro. I know it's like supposed to be a mystery flavor. Like, ooh, you'll never be able to pin down. It tastes like marshmallows and graham crackers and vanilla. It's taro. It's taro. <laughs> yeah, it's taro root. I think I th there legitimately is a tea that I have. Um, it's called lightning mutated oolong um, because the, the tea tree was struck, like it was a 400 year old tea tree that was struck by lightning and um half of the tree survived and the tea started tasting different and nobody oh. can quite pin down the flavor notes like nobody can agree interesting it's it, it's just a very it's an it's a really lovely flavor but it's it doesn't taste like anything else that's fucking so cool that's yeah, super it's, super cool it's it's wild um like it, and the other cool thing is the flavors change the more you the more times you steep it like, if you gong foo it, then, like, every steep is going to taste a little bit different. Damn! Like, which is not, which is not normal, uh, or, excuse me, which is normal for oolongs, but the amount it changes is remarkable. Hold on, somebody said, uh, we gotta read the, read the warning scale? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Visitors- The, the warning? <laughs> oh, shit! Okay, so everything is safe uh, uh, up until the green line where visitors are encouraged to consult a physician before entering like the, the horny pools, but they're yeah. encouraged to consult a religious, mystic, or sexual wellness counselor before entering the really horny pool. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Make sure you're, ma make sure you're prepared to be extra horny. <laughs> <laughs> It'll change your life, dude. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I've known people who would be like, be careful smoking this weed, man. It's gonna make you so horny. <laughs> you got, you have to see a religious counselor before you try this kush, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there, there's, there's something I wanted to show you that is, that touches on something similar. Mm. 
Uh, it is a an in, intra, interventerial camping equipment user guide, Ooh. and uh, it has some additional tips on it. Uh, and there's see. a particular tip. Yeah, here, check out these uh, camping, the, these camping tents. What? Oh my God! They're like, uh, they're like a, uh, <laughs> they're like cells, like pods. Yeah, it's well, a geodesic structures are very stable, and mm. the idea is they these are meant to keep you alive in case um, the trail collapses. Oh, I see. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, interventral camping or backcountry camping with a mystery flesh pit. National Park's many unreinforced natural trails offers unparalleled challenges and opportunities to the serious hiker and outdoorsman. Leaving behind the illuminated and ventilated infrastructure of the main park area requires more than an exceptional physical endurance and psychological fortitude. The environment of the pit necessitates the use of machinery specifically designed to help you get the most of your hiking adventure. The yellow bag in your kit contains your in <laughs> interventerial interventerial yeah. tent. Unlike traditional tents, this tent has been designed specifically to accommodate two hikers within the inner anatomy of the mystery flesh pit. The sturdy frame once assembled will protect you from the potentially crushing action of the peristaltic muscle action Paris warriors. <laughs> Peristaltic. Peristaltic. <laughs> My brain too small to remember word. <laughs> I I literally have an, an a literature degree and a, ah. and a writing with a writing minor. Like it's cool. that's not a flex. It's like this is all I can do. Peristaltic muscle action. <laughs> while you are asleep, while the special fabric of the dent prevents the pit from leaching moisture from your body. The orange bag in your kit contains your support pack, an all-in-one unit designed to provide you with electrical power, illumination, a propane stove, and conditioned air. Also contained within the orange bag are the necessary hoses to connect your support pack to your interventerial tent. Ooh. I, I want to point you to mm -hmm. specifically one of the additional tips. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth one. Exercise an attitude of respect and courtesy for fellow hikers you may encounter. For many, the act of hiking a multi-day natural trail is a deeply personal and intimate journey made by people of many different lifestyles and backgrounds. However, if another party invites you to join them for a meal or psychosexual ritual, consider it. Memories made on the trails are often memories that last a lifetime. Aw, wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I would sit down with a, 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 a nice snack with a fellow hiker. <laughs> Natural trails or... in the mystery flesh pit exist in complete damp darkness. Please ensure that your personal and camp lights are operational before setting out. Ah, oh, no bioluminescence, unfortunate. Don't slut shame fellow hikers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, hold on. Do they have vending machines? Well, kind of. They have stations. Oh, they definitely do in the mm. lower visitor center. Would you like to take a look? Yeah, I'd love to take a look at the lower visitor center. Here you go. So this is like the main hub of like uh, the population, basically. Yeah, if you are going to do anything in the mystery flesh pit, chances are this will be your first stop. Mm-hmm. Your adventure into the wonder and magnificence of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park begins as your enclosed gondola begins to descend down into the darkness, away from the blistering heat and light of the Permian Basin. Just in the 20 minute twisting and turning ride down into the maw of this immense organism feels like it might never end, an illuminated structure comes into view beneath your feet. Step out of the elevator and into the well-lit and comfortable lobby of the Lower Visitor Center, your gateway to an unforgettable visit to one of the world's most unique natural wonders. Hold on. Ooh, that's... Hold on, this one's huge. Yeah, no, this, this structure is actually utterly massive, and there's another bit of context that I think you would appreciate. Let me find it real quick. Is this it? Yes, this is it. Uh, this is a letter to um, James Bernard Jackson here. Hmm. Um, to the Anodyne Board of, uh, of Directors for Anodyne Incorporated. Anodyne, um, in case you haven't, in case chat hasn't picked it up, um, 
is the company that it is tasked with like looking after the park um it got very commercialized um that like for example they're pumping amniotic ballast out and just feeding it to people without being certain what to do with mm, yum, it yum, 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 yum. uh james jackson writes to them what the hell is this when you all sought out my expertise for the little VIP lodge, I expressed my concerns plainly, but was otherwise supportive. Against my suggestion, you had your architect draft a larger plan, and I gave you some appropriate pushback. I was of the understanding that our prior agreements about the scale of your small lodge were final, or at the very least I would be included on any changes to this whole enterprise. So gentlemen, Imagine my surprise when I find out earlier today that you've green greenlit construction of a 210 room resort. This decision is wholly opposed to every conservation effort that the company has agreed to, and I'm amazed that the Park Service is allowing this. Since you all seem bent on going about business regardless of my advice, I see no reason for me to remain on this board, so consider this my formal resignation. James Jackson. <laughs> I, saw, I love too large question mark exclamation point. <laughs> I love how this guy was like, yeah, okay, you can build tiny bread and breakfast as a treat. And then they built a whole fucking cruise ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surely nothing will go wrong. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> We're we're perfectly unobtru uh, unintrusive. Unintrusive, on, on yeah. Creature. Just a it's just a big boy. Here, I'm I, I I love how this is just a story of well maybe a little more capitalism <laughs> would be okay. <laughs> As a treat, just a like, little and more. They just, <laughs> they just did that over and over. I think my favorite iteration of this was well you know what, I think it speaks for itself. This. Oh. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at the thumbnail for this link that you sent me. All right. <laughs> Roadless Rally 88 Yay. third annual 4x4 off road jamboree through the mystery flash pit summer qualifier May 21. <laughs> 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 no! No! <laughs> I we just the, boys, the we cannot do this. I just love the gore being torn up and <laughs> flung into the air. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I love I my, my I think my favorite part about this poster is it comes with absolutely no qualification from Trevor Roberts the or uh, the, the person who made it like it's... <laughs> it's, this graphic design is my passion ass poster I know it's perfect it's really good third annual <laughs> 88 okay so that do you is there more lore behind the roadless rally or is this uh, just some that more bullshit that happened in the that park that's about it i think it's just <laughs> okay. another thing that a happened. remnant mm -hmm. let's see we got the yeah that's the that's the elevator the 22 or the 20 minute elevator sorry i have outer wilds on the brain uh <laughs> hold on oh this is fucking nice actually can i zoom in more on this uh, uh, you should control. be able to click on any pictures that can be enlarged and then like it'll take you to the image alone and you can zoom in. Uh, yeah, you got oh, it. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Fuck, it's not working. I I, I was like a uh, control, uh, control plusing, but all right. Everybody oh, sweet, it. we got a Burger King in here. I know, right? What is, what is, I... <laughs> why does it only zoom into one corner? What is this? A adder adder vix? Uh, a adder vix. I, I'm not familiar. I don't. It might be I don't know what the thing. blue thing. I, I think that might be Baskin Robbins. I think it is Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Oh this my place God. is lit. <laughs> we got a nice uh nice courtyard for eating. Very good. Very beautiful. I'm a fan. I'd stay here. Yeah. I think that 
I, I, I love the fact that, like, so much space is wasted, too. Like, look <laughs> at, like, you have to imagine yeah. that inside of a gigantic biological organism, mm -hmm. there, like, space would be at a premium, but they have, like, a fucking Burger King. It's... <laughs> It's yeah, amazing. Just, how how much, uh, how far can we push the boundaries? Yeah. How much space <laughs> can we waste? Somebody God. add in a relaxation garden. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I, like I, I feel like that actually might be a good use of space, but because can you imagine spending a few days down in? Here? Oh, with no plants or anything. God, yeah, that would just... be, that's nice. There's a chapel though, which is. <laughs> yeah, a non-denominational chapel. I I love. I oh, non-denominational, even worse. <laughs> it's just, it's like pray to whatever god you want. They're not gonna hear you down here. <laughs> <laughs> Water reclamation plant. Okay, so th this shit is all good. Uh, we got park rangers. We got a service motor pool. We got communication, medical. Uh, yeah, where are the rooms at though? Oh, gift shop. Nice. Okay. I'm trying to find the rooms. They said there was a like um, what 210 that, that's elsewhere. Um th there's there's one place, there's one place that goes to the trail access. Oh, the chapels uh, in Terrace case Belton. you want to get married in the mystery flesh pit. That's you're so much smarter than me. <laughs> no, I, I I actually you know what that's probably correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Internal anatomy vehicle, terrace balconies provide spectacular views from within all level. Oh, um I'm, I'm just looking to see where. Yeah, the I don't lodge, know where the like rooms where is. The I'm assuming they're just, you know, they're somewhere I, in I here. I don't think. Well, no, I, I think mm -hmm. that they're attached to one of the offshoots because you, you, if if you look at the diagram that the person was like too large, you can see it goes off to um to either side. Oh. Like it it goes. Oh yeah 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 no that that totally makes sense. Okay. Or is this, um, I actually, you know what? I think this is the above ground one. That this is, this is above ground because if we oh, this look one? back, uh, the lodge, uh, oh, the not, lodge. not the one that we were looking at the, the yeah, the, the one that where they're saying too large, the one James Bernard Jackson was complaining about. Let me look where, yeah. If, if we look at the, remember when we were looking at the orifice, there it is. I think the Marriott. Oh, hold it, on. Wait, was it the Marriott? Or is this something that's down below? This, wait. this is, no, 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 this no, no, is no, no, in, no. I believe. No, I'm, I'm, I'm big braining. I'm big braining. I remember. Oh. I remember there was um, there was a brochure about these things, uh, about this resort down below. Let me find it. Let me just let me just go digging. Okay, sure. I'm 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 doing big brain. I'm doing Yeah, 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 big brain. Big brain. It. Oh man, sorry, this thing is so fucking horizontal. It's hard for me to <laughs> to make it fit on my stream. No, you just gotta poke around. It, it's true. Mm -hmm. there, there's so much detail on them. Let's see. Let see. Uh, those are all maintenance, mm, park control, executive office, conference rooms. Oh, sweet, there's a museum and a theater. Nice. A tobacco shop? Well, of course. Okay, I'm, I'm closing stuff. God, it's gotten cluttered. Okay. And your orifice. There are some jobs. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Hmm. Meet the mesoglial tridecapod. I forgot about this. Ooh, I would love to meet the tridecapod. Okay, you know what? Yeah. Here, meet, meet the tridecapod while I find um, I will the happily meet the tridecapod. <laughs> Oh, I want to pick him up in both my hand, in all four of my hands, and shake his numerous hands. One second, let me resize. He's a again. buddy. He's just a fella. He's liter. He's just a little guy. Let's see. Commonly considered a nuisance animal, the tridecapod is a fascinating species which plays an important role within the unique ecosystem of the Mystery of Flesh Pit National Park by filtering out potentially harmful blood-based parasites. They're named so because of their 13 legs, 12 of which are elongated and used for locomotion with a 13th modified leg plated in durable keratinous, keratinous segments used as a head. Uh, oh, ew. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're non-venomous and passive, tending to congregate around high voltage areas associated with park infrastructure. Oh, I bet they like the heat. I bet they just like to stay warm, like like the elk uh, or the caribou in, in Anwar National Park in Alaska. Uh, well, not, not necessarily Anwar, but like, uh, they like to congregate around oil pipes and, and press their bodies up against them because they're warm. <laughs> it's very cute. Let's see, eggs are laid and hatched deep within the firmament biome. Uh, the mystery flesh pit in early autumn has spent the next two months crawling up to the arterial ring of the Permian Basin superorganism. As they mature, the tridecapods migrate from heart to heart along this vascular chain, spending as long as- a Wait, so they have multiple hearts, huh? Or the, uh, the, 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 the beast. I mean, obviously it has multiple hearts. <laughs> but are there- is it on a map anywhere? Can I touch the heart? One second. I found it, by the way. Oh. It, it was hard to find because it was part of a QA and a um, that, that the author and creator of the Mystery Flesh Fit did. Um, oh, you have to scroll down a little okay. Bit. I thought that's why I was having trouble finding it. Sorry, I just felt very excited. It's okay. Let's see. Hold on. Ooh, maybe... Um, I, I'm going to go back to the Q&A because I'm really interested in what the creator has okay. to say. <laughs> okay. Um, Which so one am I looking go for? Down, mm. So if you scroll down, uh, there's a question. W was the Interpit Resort owned by a chain? Ah. Was it more rustic like National Park Outdoorsy or more luxury? It was designed to offer the pinnacle of 1985 contemporary luxury. Hilton Hotels! <laughs> yep, it was a fucking Hilton. It was a fucking Hilton! Of course it was a fucking Hilton! Hilton is the brand that would like commit like at crimes against God and nature, right? <laughs> like if there was any, it, it might be them. Actually, no. I mm. I feel like Red Lion is too um, too opportunistic. They don't think big enough. Um, Hilton. Hilton is, thinks big. Yeah, they think big enough to commit crimes against God. Hilton absolutely has an underground laboratory right now where they are attempting to engineer a false god. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, these are facts and legally actionable. <laughs> <laughs> the, these claims are legally actionable. Conservation considerations. Since so the introduction of man made electrical infrastructure within the Mystery Flesh Pit, Tridecapods often mistake electrical conduit cables for arterial vessels. Tragedy follows when these animals <laughs> attempt to feed by cutting into the cables, yeah, resulting just... in electrocution of the Tridecapod and costly downtime and maintenance to the park electrical system. <gasps> Wait, so they're like squirrels. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like squirrels or like sharks that nibble on internet cables. Yeah! Oh, so, yeah. fuck, fuck, the lights are out. Tridecapod chewed through one of the cables mm -hmm. again. Mm. Little dudes. Ooh, God, I, I love them. They're just buddies. They're just little dudes. Wait, hold on. I think this is a little hard for me to contextualize next to a person. Uh, yeah, that, I would hate to see that in my house. Yeah, no, if you saw this thing skittering around, right? Like, <laughs> you, you, you just think about hearing the thumping of its Ugh, legs on just the floor. Just a fucking... Like, like, what if it's a carpeted floor? So it's just like... Thunk, 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 That's yeah. fucking horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. <laughs> Wait, I want to... Wow, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I want to... I want to see what else they have to say. Wait, hold on. We might want to get to the Q&A after... Uh... Uh, because the timeline of the Mystery Flesh Pit is slightly linear, you know? Yes. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. But there are a couple of things, actually. Mm -hmm. um, if you scroll down, because it, it talks a little bit about the incident report, but if you scroll down past that, we can see, we talked a little bit about um, the compound surface fauna. Compound and, surface um, fauna. Yeah, and okay. how it's rare for humans to appear in them. Well, th there's a little bit more information down, um, if you scroll down, I think it's the fourth question. Fourth question? Here. Yeah. Okay. They say, you said that some people were recovered from compound surface fauna. How many were successfully removed? Are any still alive today? Um, I, it was not the fourth question. Hold on. Was it? Uh, one, two, three. It should be the fourth. 
Oh, no, it, this is a different Q&A that I just linked to you. Oh, it's my bad, my bad. Q &A. Here, let's do it. You're good, you're good. Fourth question. Two, and there three, also is another, another little creature and at the sixth <gasps> question. Creature! Okay, first of all, I want to look at this little creature. Oh, Aww. This, this gives me uh, Frank and Fran vibes, if you're familiar. Oh, Frank shit. Frank and Fran. Frank and Fran. That wasn't the... Mm. It, it, it was a manga that gets, like, very weird. Oh, okay. I don't and, know then. Like, it, it involves a, like, a character, like, a monster a doctor who, um, a, a cute, a cute monster, like, Frankenstein girl who's, Aww. um, who, who's an assistant to a great doctor. Wait! Uh, who is always out. Wait, and, hmm? wait, wait, wait. I think I might. Uh, was it... Uh, was it like an actual manga, or was it more of yeah, just it like was a an brief... actual manga? Okay, no, act well, like it was sounds... a proper manga series. Sounds really familiar. Uh, it goes hard, Frank yeah. And Fran. I'm just gonna look it up super quick, see if I recognize the art, and then we can move. Yeah, okay, no I don't recognize the art, uh, which is fine. Okay, um, but but the character has an imperative to preserve life, hmm. and that that can take any form. And there are multiple times where, like, sh like, she has combined bodies into horrific amalgamations like this. Oh, that, that was just God. why I was reminded of it. I, I'm a fan. I love, I love that kind of body horror. It, it, also it also reminds me a bit of one of my favorite SCPs. Are you familiar with the human Beowulf complex? Uh, it, I might remember it. It's the one where, like, it's a bunch of human bodies that are all, like, melted together in the basement of a veal processing facility, and in the center is a tower of interconnected brains. Oh, fuck yeah. It's it's fuck one of my favorites. Yes. I, I used it in my SCP tabletop campaign that I did with my friends. Oh, like, cool. Back. Yeah. Um, oh, and one honest. of the doctors, um, usually the brain is just absorbed, but one of the doctors of the foundation needed to know what it was thinking, so he threw himself into it, and it, it uh, brought his brain into the tower and added it. Yeah! I love a that! A, a Beowulf complex is a bunch of computers that have been linked together to combine their processing power. Yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. it's a human Beowulf complex. Awesome. A big human supercomputer network. I love it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Some people were covered from the compound surface fauna. How many were successfully removed and are any still alive? Well, HIPAA and similar regulations prevent you from finding out exactly how many people even suffered amalgamation. It's estimated that fewer than half a dozen ever survived the treatment process to recovery. Recovery, though, is a loaded word. The treatment co-developed by Baylor Medical Center and the Anodyne Corporation was highly dependent on the nature of the amalgamation and seems to have been the most successful with combined masses containing only human tissue. The procedure... It, don't worry, yeah. though. It's extremely rare. <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> rare. <laughs> I mean, we can't tell you how often it happened due to HIPAA regulations, but, but like, totally it never bad. happens. Yeah. The procedure for treatment involved removing the brain and as much of the spinal cord as possible from the amalgamation yeah. <laughs> when possible. Extraction of the other organs such as eyes, cochlear tissues, tongues, and larynx would later enable the recovered patient a sensory experience much closer to that which they had previously enjoyed since medical technology. <gasps> <laughs> I'm in I'm in hell. This is hell. Yeah. is still unable to replicate the organic sensory quality of human sensory tissues. However, the difficulty and cost of this additional procedure all but ensured that this rarely took place. Once extracted, the brain of the individual patient will be placed in a nutrient salve and connected to a proprietary interface and life support system developed by the Anodyne Company. A rudimentary computer-based system could be used to accommodate it to communicate with the recovered patient after several months of therapy. In some cases, individuals were reportedly able to use both quarters to synthesize. But just let me, just let them die. Just, <laughs> just, just put them yep. down. What the fuck? I, I'm immediately reminded of that bit from Metalocalypse where like um what one of the characters gives their dad a, a um a, a synthesized speech device and mm. all he says is kill me no! kill me kill me yes. I have not had an erection in 50 years <laughs> kill me kill me just let them die bro what the fuck <laughs> ah! 
Okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's just sometimes you gotta you gotta just let him go. <laughs> That's torture. Yeah, he'll they'll care less if they're not around anymore. Yeah. <laughs> scroll, so if you scroll down, we have another buddy. <gasps> a, a a gasp owl. A gasp owl. A gasp owl. Also known That's as a just my brother. suckling sprite or a buggin. Are all names given to the same peculiar type of creature found in deeper portions of the mystery flesh pit's anatomy? They're very elusive and one of the least studied fauna within the park, with very few living examples surviving in captivity long enough to study. They are believed to be descended from an avian ancestor, though this is speculation at best. The name Gasp Owl is a reference to the characteristic labored breathing which plagues these small and curious creatures. Oh, they're just like pugs. <laughs> Except made by nature. Yeah. <laughs> Many tourists and park staff would erroneously report having spotted the fabled marrow folk, when in reality they had stumbled upon a small brood of frightened gasp owls. Oh, <laughs> so there is a rumor that there are uh, like people that live inside it, right? I imagine this is entirely just, you know, it, Bigfoot shit, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, no, like a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, I th this is definitely one of those cases where why would you make shit up? Reality is already horrifying. Enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but what if there were people already in the mystery flesh pit? <laughs> right. <laughs> Next level sloppy toppy. Oh my god! What the fuck? Wow, thanks. That is something <laughs> I could have gone my entire life not hearing. <laughs> And yet, ah! Chat, you guys I, are monsters. I am lesser for this. <laughs> I, one more spark has been extinguished. His <laughs> smile and optimism gone. <laughs> Ew. Why is this? That is a gross orifice, isn't it? It's beautiful. I though. like his punchy hands. I bet I bet that boy could deliver a wallop, you know? Oh no, this like this motherfucker belongs in like Skullgirls or something. <laughs> right? Could, could you imagine that the sort of combos that th that this boy could do? They are so bony. They are. They're like not even worth like taking a chomp out of. You know? Otherwise, I imagine people would try to eat these bad boys. Oh no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would you like to learn? I believe that they live in the bronchial forest. Would you like to learn about I'd the bronchial forest? I'd love to learn forest? about the bronchial forest. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Oh god. Mm. Ooh. That right there is the start of some good haggis. <laughs> Zoom in a little. Little, please? No? No zoom? Okay. Oh, Helium 3. I like Funny Moth, too. Oh, hello. Thank you very much for having me on, by the way. I'm You're like, so I'm, I'm welcome. A time. You're so welcome. I'm, I'm super <laughs> happy. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just vibing. It, this is a good vibe. It's a delight. It, it is. Uh, hold on. Let me let me read a little bit about the living, breathing forest. Take in the cool air as it rushes around you. Breathe in the living history of hundreds and millions of years of natural evolution and adaptation. The southern bronchial forests, like all bronchial forests within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, are enormous respiratory organs that fulfill a variety of roles in the highly complex and interdependent ecosystem of the Permian Basin superorganism. Each year, millions of tons of gases, such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, and nitrogen are exchanged within these colossal organs in slow breaths. These long breaths fluctuate with the changing of the seasons. It takes about six months for just one of these lungs to fully inhale or exhale. During the inhalation process, Cool air slowly inflates the many thousands of bronchioles within the forest. This provides the Permian Basin superorganism with oxygen in a large volume of relatively cool winter air. Conversely, during the summer, uh, warm summer months, a slow exhalation process disperses the buildups of carbon dioxide and waste heat. The thermal exchange of waste heat into the outer atmosphere is a vital way in which the mystery flesh pit is able to maintain its metabolic processes. Oh, climate change! <laughs> this asshole <laughs> stop stop that 
Clear, yeah, clearly, the, this is the problem. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I, no, this motherfucker took, like, take a deep breath a little bit too close to heart. Big breath! My goodness, the lung capacity! Imagine, <laughs> imagine if they made, like, a, like a giant-sized tuba and just stuck it in one of the pores. The longest <laughs> note ever played. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about mm. the time I, um, like, you know I made a video about the hurdy-gurdy. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, early on I talk about the concept of the continuous sound and how early on people, um, practice circular breathing mm -hmm. in order to be able to keep playing. That it's a, it's a simple concept, right? You fill your cheeks with air and then, like, you use that air to keep blowing while you breathe in quickly through your nose. It's, it's a very, it's a very simple concept. Um, the I got a comment that was just like, I have certifications in multiple instruments and I can tell you that circular breathing is a myth. It, this is silly. Why would you have this in your video? And I'm just like, <laughs> motherfucker, I, 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 what do, what do you even what, say what, to someone what do you who is want? so confidently incorrect? I don't like. I don't know shit about that. If, to if be this honest. motherfucker mm. saw a video of like, I, I usually don't talk about like my my negative comments, yeah, but sure, sometimes sure. I get one that is really good, like this one. And it's like, if this motherfucker saw a video of the longest note ever played, which was on a saxophone, by the way, mm. um, on a wind instrument, um, I think that they might shit their pants and curl up into the fetal position. <laughs> You're wrong! Tell me how smart I am! I can't... Listen, sometimes I get things wrong in my videos, but... <laughs> when someone is just so confident... Like, wh where did this person get their motherfucking... Like, wh what, did, what did he call... What did, he, what did I say he called them? Um, oh. They were... Uh, certi like, in certifications. It's like, what do you mean a certification for an instrument? Did you... Like... Like yeah, now hold on that... a minute. <laughs> what is an instrument certification? What, Wait, what you, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody Your YouTube knows. video ruined my whole fucking day. Tell me how smart I am. <laughs> I, I get comments like that. I also got some comments um, mm. on my Deep Blue video like that, where I, I got a comment recently that was like, um, actually, when it was valuing um, knights and bishops, at, uh, outposted knights and bishops as as worth the same, um, that is actually a waiting error and not a bug. And I just wanted to grab this person's <gasps> shoulders as, and scream, tell that to the motherfucker who made it and called it a bug. <gasps> actually, that's, tell a, that to actually Shin Shin that's an error, not a bug. <laughs> Take it up with motherfucking Feng Sheng Shu, who wrote that it was a bug in his book. <laughs> fucking tell him that he's wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, you got a fucking license for that tuba. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, me and a chatter said it at exactly the same time. How is that possible? What the fuck? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh my sorry, god. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there. I just sometimes I get like pe people are given the ability to speak and don't respect that fact. <sighs> it's 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 a blessing to be able to speak, chat. <laughs> Make sure your words have weight. <laughs> yeah. Recognize that it is a privilege to be able to speak <laughs> and speak freely. In the <laughs> Don't fucking aim those like keep those words downrange, motherfucker. <laughs> oh let's Okay, see anyway, here. sorry. I th thank you this for <laughs> allowing me to just mauled for a minute. Yeah, feel free, man. Feel free. I'm malding. Hold on, my my face is sore. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, mine is. I'm like, th this is definitely one of those times where I'm like grinning so much that my cheeks hurt. <laughs> Me too, man. Like, I've been laughing. Like, I think a, a solid at least third of this stream has just been me laughing. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm, let's 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 slice into this chunk of meat here. Uh, unlike many of the unique environments found within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, the bronchial forests exhibit a climate that is norm nominally habitable to humans. Fresh oxygenated air drawn in from the surface of the park allows visitors to experience the stunning vistas and breathtaking scenery of this uh, geobiological formation without the need for bulky respirators, helmets, or other heavy protective gear. However, unlike the majority of the park, which is accessible to visitors, many of the trails found within the bronchial forest are undeveloped and preserved in their natural state. Chasms and bronchial passages within the forest are generally unmarked. Before hiking into the forest, please seek advice from a park ranger. Ask for an updated map, which contains in-depth information about specific traits Trails, conditions, and smart hiking practices from either the lower visitor center or from a ranger station. Many believe they are strong hikers and that a hike into the bronchial forest is easy. Know your limits. Very wise, very wise. <laughs> know your limits when you start talking about circular breathing. <laughs> know your limits, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Trails are close. Oh, I... uh, sorry. Oh, just, I, imagine trying to explain, like, yeah, I'm going to go walk into a lobe today. I if it is possible for you to say that you entered a lobe, like, maybe you should reconsider what you are doing. <laughs> uh, the trails are closed to the public from early May until late September each year, as the Permian Basin superorganism completes an exhalation cycle. Excessive carbon dioxide concentration, excessive heat, and aggressive behavioral patterns of local wildlife create dangerous conditions to guests and work personnel. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, it, it's like, it, it's respirating. Yeah, it's, it's just breathing out. Oh, let's see. Oh. We got, uh, this is about a four and a half hour hike. Steep all the way up to an overlook. I wonder, oh. I have to wonder, like, how big is a person on this map? Right. It's it, really I mean, fucking it's, small. It's a, it's a four and a half hour walk. I th That's the thing is, yeah. w when you say that a hike is, is long, usually what you're saying is that it takes a long time to complete and the actual length of it uh, might not actually be that long, but if it's like very, if, if the elevation changes a lot, then it can be a lot longer, or, or if the trail is not super clean. Oh, right, okay, hold on. So this is a ranger station right here. There is mm. a phone, there's uh, medical equipment, there's bathrooms, picnic benches, and that's, that's like the size of my cursor. Beautiful. Yeah. I, oh, it, I, I think that just thinking about the scale of it is, um, is uncomfortable. It's kind of difficult. Inherently yeah. uncomfortable. I oh, think yeah. the, the other thing is, how do you pick out trails that actually allow you, you would think there would be a lot of verticality. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that there is. I imagine that they've had to establish like ladders in different places in order to climb. Oh, of course. Uh, hold on, we got some wildlife. Uh, oh, yeah. Many unique and fascinating species of plants and animals call the bronchial forest home. As you hike through bronchioles and spelunk into alveolar sacs, which can watch carefully for existing colonies of fungus, lichens, slimes, and molds which thrive in the humid and dark interior. In interior. Macrobacteria often feed upon these sessile forms of life, with some varieties forming large colonies in the lower mucus-rich crypts of the forest. Multi winged mucus rich. Mu yuck. I don't want to think about mucus rich, all right? <laughs> all right, hold on. These little. These are cute. Oh, it's on an arm. I thought that was a finger. That's pretty big, actually. Yeah, he's just he's just vibing. No, that definitely is an arm. God. Oh, oh look, look at his little. <laughs> are those pincers? <laughs> I hope not. During an uncharacteristically benign encounter. Okay, so those things are aggro. Those pincers are, are th those things are coming for your toes. Oh God, they'll they'll, they'll go bite you. They are gonna get you. I like the glowing know. mushrooms. Always a fan of glowing mushrooms. And there we go. That's that's an actual picture of one of the macro bacteria. Yeah, I, I was gonna say we get we got one of your buddies. Yeah, it'll extend its uh, sensory <laughs> oh, appendages as it forages I'm, for I'm food. I'm in the way. Bingies. Um, no, I know you're in the way. Uh, okay, here. hold on. What if what if I like? 
Uh, oh god, I think I'm leaning into. No, I'm not leaning into. I, I was like, here, just, okay, what I'll if just I go the other way? Here. 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 Okay, here. There you go. Oh, okay. Yay. Does, I get to sit on Junie's lap. Does this make you nervous? <laughs> 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 Look at that chat. They got little sensory fingies. Fan of infected <laughs> mushrooms? Yeah, dude, I love infected mushrooms. Big fan. Hey. Mm. Hey, that. Yeah. Okay, look. I, I think most people know that know that band at this point on the internet from um it was a mistake to come here. Oh right! <laughs> the the comes yeah 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 <laughs> sucks dick. <laughs> Pressure cook my balls. <laughs> Swallow my rod. Come <laughs> suck God. Come Messiah. Give me the cum scar. Certified hood classic. <laughs> uh, I've listened to Infected Mushrooms before. Actually, you might not believe it, but I listened to Infected Mushrooms before the cum anthems. Oh, so did I. I actually, like, when I was in high school, um, the wife of one of my fencing masters gave mm. me a burn CD with a bunch of techno and Infected Mushrooms Whoa, on it. Oh, a burn yeah. CD? She gave yeah. you a mixtape? Yeah, she gave me a mixtape. She gave me so a, cool. a mixtape. <laughs> uh, like, and she burned some Rammstein CDs for me. That's that was so like cool. part of my introduction to metal. Oh, Infected Mushrooms didn't do the cum anthem. They're just the 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 uh, because a lot of their music is non-vocal. Somebody did like a basically a cover. Yeah, yeah. It, it, bo both of them use Infected Mushroom for mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for the instrumentals. Also, Juniper, yeah. I'm realizing that because I chose magenta as my background color, yeah. my tongue disappears. Oh shit! Wait, open, open uh... wide. Oh my god, it does! <laughs> Wait, I can make this. Uh, I can, I can actually decrease the similarity a little bit. Oh, will that will that help here? Ah. Uh... Ah, uh, that I think I think that helped. Uh, I don't think your tongue is transparent anymore. Uh, uh, it's a little washed uh, out. There we go. There we go. Uh, I got you. Uh, okay. Yay. Okay. Good. <laughs> There's a hole in me. <laughs> oh, have you played Cult of the Lamb? I haven't yet. I've been, oh. uh, I kind of want to play it on stream just because of the Twitch integration, but I've been going through a couple games. Yeah. Like, I, I would say um, now might actually be the time now that fewer people are clogging up. Now that it's cooled down a little. Up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's like, what I was it's... waiting for. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard it's kind of baby easy, uh, which is okay, because I'm too fucking ADHD boosted to play hard games Dude, on stream. <laughs> I, I really liked it. Um, it definitely is good for like one playthrough, though. Um, it's not okay. super deep. Um, and, and finishing it, it just made me even more excited for the Wandering Village. Oh, is that uh, is that DLC that they're working on, or no? The Wandering Village is uh, it's a, is another game that's coming out in oh. early access next month, where you um, you manage a village riding on the top of a gigantic <gasps> like rock puppy. Oh, wait, oh, so is it is it like a like a village builder or like yeah, a management it, it's game? A, yeah, it's a village management game. Oh, um, wait, hold on, and, and I gotta the, the, I gotta look into this. Yeah, look it up. Hard recommend. I got into the beta and it is so fucking good. Sorry, you said it's called the Lost Village. No, the wandering. The wandering village. village my bad. Wandering yeah. village. It, you're in. It, it's very inspired by like Studio Ghibli. Um, it, it very clearly takes inspiration <gasps> oh from my... Nausicaa. Oh my god! You. Oh, you're on a sauropod. Oh my fucking yeah. god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> It's been so long. It's been so long since I've uh, I've had a game that has sort of like piqued my interest. Uh, I've been trying to get into <laughs> FTL recently. It's a little hard to get Ooh. into. I, I am enjoying it, it but uh, I also really like uh, like management village simulator type games too. Oh yeah, uh, um, Stellaris oh my is my comfort game. Uh, I played Stellaris before, but that one was so so deep. Like I, I played it's one round, deep, yeah. and, and I was like, "Boy, I'm gonna come back to this. This is so much." <laughs> <laughs> I, if, if you need some help, I, mm. I kind of explain complicated things for a living, and I would be ah, happy to help. Dude, I, I, like, I would definitely definitely be down for trying to get back into Stellaris at some I, point. I would be happy. I would be happy to assist. Yeah, I would yeah. enjoy. I'll it. let you know. Oh, chat! Yeah, the game is called no, The no Wandering reason. Village. Yeah, maybe like, maybe show some footage of it. Yeah, like, sure. I just uh, it's, sometimes it's I just don't like opening up tabs on oh, Firefox. Oh yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that's very. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, anyways. 
No, I like if if I did help you with Solaris, I'd like become even more senpai because I am like I'm already uh, becoming uh, Alfilda's total Warhammer senpai. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is Saturday, right? No, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. That. That, that'll be very, very cool. I haven't gotten into Total War yet, um, or, or Warhammer. I, like, I know Warhammer lore uh, mm -hmm. to a degree, but I've never, like, played any of the games or gotten into the tabletop, uh, <laughs> which sounds really, mm -hmm. really expensive. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Although, like, mm -hmm. I've found uh, all of my hobbies are, like, on the computer. Even writing is a computer habit. Um, the, only ha the only hobby I have that isn't on the computer is reading. And I think that... I, I've considered getting into painting miniatures just because it's something it's something really nice that I can focus on and like I do not on the computer and then I have I have little buddies. Yeah, I've painted one miniature before and it was really fun. Uh, it it seems really good. Yeah, I, okay, I also have the hurdy gurdy, that's true. Oh that, that is very true. Oh that's fucking that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Even chess is online now though. Yeah. Huh. I, I, live tournaments. I gotta get into a new offline hobby because I, I got into <laughs> fish keeping uh, and now now I, I've pretty much maximized uh, <laughs> how many uh, how many aquariums I can keep right now, which is two, which means I need to find <laughs> another one. I need to find another right. hobby <laughs> or it's just gonna like escalate. Chat can tell you, you guys watched my uh, decline into fish keeping madness. I need a third tank, 120 gallon. No, no, I can't. <laughs> it's, it, 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 like, okay, fish keeping takes up way more space than you would expect because you also have to have space to keep all of the other stuff to keep the oh, fish tank so going. Oh, there's so much stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, like it's, a been, a, it's been a horrible, horrible addiction. Uh, but I, I'm Although, uh, pushing the brakes, yeah? If you have plants, uh, mm -hmm. something that my my parents started doing with their fish tank was um, they would take like you know how sometimes you uh, you have to clean out the uh, pebbles at the bottom yeah um, and you're like sucking up the water. Uh, what they did was take that water and then um, pour it into the plants into their plants. Because Actually, that's what that's what I've been doing. Uh, oh, I have a couple nice. of bushes out at my entryway that flower. Uh, they aren't flowering right now, but I started giving them the dirty aquarium water, and they have been thriving. They look yeah, so nice. healthy. Because they were that's... pretty dry when I moved in. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it, it's so satisfying to see plants, like, really... Like, if they're not doing well, just take care of them, and then they just thrive. It's so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. We... <laughs> We're we're just dweebing out. Of like, do you want to see my snail? Here for me. Yes, I want to. <laughs> I want to see your snail. I'm gonna. That's show not you. a euphemism, right? Like, I <laughs> no, 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 no. You actually okay, get good. to see a snail. Uh, are you? Are do you have my stream open or anything? Yes. Okay. Awesome. This is Bunny. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, she. Her name is Bunny. Oh, She's really, Bunny. really popular. Uh, oh my gosh. She is a, a golden mystery snail. Uh, and she she likes carrots, which is why I named her Bunny. Oh, it's because she'll oh, she'll munch on that's... carrots and she'll wrap her body around carrots and roll around <gasps> with them like a dog. Oh my gosh! Have you? I don't yeah. think I've ever been so excited about anything Dude. that I've like wrapped my entire body around it. <laughs> let me let me tell you, I was like I was not that interested in adding snails to my aquarium until I, I until I got bunny, and then I was like, holy shit, snails are literally everything. <laughs> They're, oh, they're, they're precious. They have, they have personality. They, they do, they're so cute, they're so cute. I want to put them in my mouth and thrash them around like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they can take it, because they're snails. Yeah. Yeah, she actually, uh, I, I... The reason I have two aquariums now was because uh, my beta, uh, when I got the snail, he he was he's a fucking incel bully asshole, and he harassed the shit out of her. Uh, where... These are dicks. <laughs> yeah, I mean my my other beta didn't like didn't mind at all. Like I had shrimp in there too, uh, and he didn't care at all. But but he he died because he had like cancer or some shit. Um, wow. it, but but the new one is a total asshole. So I just set up another tank. 
uh, for them. But while she was in with the beta, she like climbed out of the tank and tried to escape multiple times. She was not having it. Oh. Like I woke up one one morning and she was just she was just sitting there all all sealed up because she's an aquatic snail, but just like on the table. I was like, okay, I'm so sorry, Bunny, but you're going back in. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, you know what? Now you can keep macro bacteria. Yeah. Aren't snails hermaphrodites? That's... Land snails are hermaphrodites. Uh, water snails are not. Uh, and Bunny is female. She is very, very big. <laughs> um, th There is actually a, a kind of water snail, a very small water snail that, is, that can be hermaphroditic. Mm, um, okay. that, that is invasive. That is a huge problem. Oh, really? Um, because if just one gets into a body of water, it can... Um, it can reproduce and uh, and become a pest. But oh, yeah, it's, I'm not familiar. Uh, it, it's why it's why in some places, especially like on on the west coast, um, in, in on rivers, they're very strict about um, what you bring into the water because yeah, they don't yeah. want they, they don't want invasive species getting in. So. Uh... When when I had like a very brief snail phase, when I was like, I gotta find out more about these cute little guys, I, I looked into African giant snails, uh, which are super super illegal in America because they're mm -hmm. intensely invasive. And I actually like uh, pretty recently after that, I, I heard there was a town in Florida, I think that was completely quarantined because somebody found one African giant snail, and they were like, we gotta shut oh. this place down, no imports, oh. no exports. Like, we cannot let this happen. <laughs> God, yeah. If, like, th there's a very limited window in which you can contain that shit. And, like, you have to scramble. They're to so cute, though. Okay. <laughs> so cute. They're so big. They're like big puppies. <laughs> That's why they're dangerous. Yeah, it's because everybody <laughs> would want one. <clears throat> oh, my God. We're, we... Yeah. Oh, we met flesh pit. We're. <laughs> oh, sorry. We can I can stay on topic. Hold on. We can stay on topic. I swear. I just. I. We're talking about I know snails. my tendency of, of getting of getting off topic. And no, like, it's all I, good. I'm going to ruin the stream. Hold on. One of my regulars. Gonna... One of my regulars uh, is asking about one of my other. I, I I also have a land snail named Emergency Ration. That is a grove what? snail, which I... is an invasive species. Yeah, his name's well, their name. It's from Aphrodite, but uh, right. an invasive species. So when I found it, like I basically had two options. I had to like kill it or keep it in my house. And obviously mm. I made a terrarium for it. Uh, he, he is still, it, whatever is still alive. Uh, it's very, very fucking lazy. Sometimes he'll wake up and, and I'll feed him like lettuce or something. And then he'll just go back into a corner and go back to sleep. Uh, like mm. <laughs> much less interesting than Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that, that's valid though, right? Like, in any time there's like yeah. a lazy cat or a lazy Just like dog, me. it's like valid. Just like me, for <laughs> real, for real. Wish I could just wake up, cram some fucking romaine lettuce into my mouth and pass back out. <laughs> I would if I could. If all I had to do, well, like, look, mm -hmm. I like being able to eat a variety of things. But there are times where I wish I could just shove romaine lettuce in my mouth and just have that be enough. Like, why does it have to be a hassle? I don't know, like, man. I think lately, lately I've sort of been falling down a, a sort of foreboding rabbit hole where I've started bored eating. Uh, <laughs> so like, I don't, I, I would not be actually happy to just eat romaine lettuce. I gotta eat, I gotta eat like, uh, I've gotten really into, um, you know, Pirate's Booty, the mm, mm -hmm, white mm -hmm. cheddar. Yeah. So I've started, uh, making like wing sauce, uh, and, and adding it to like Pirate's Booty and like shaking it up in like a container oh to make like That's wing. Dangerous. Yeah, like wing flavored. Oh, oh my god, it's so fucking, oh my god. It's so fucking good. Oh, that's but not, it's that's so not, dangerous. <laughs> as that, soon, that is genius and dangerous. <laughs> as soon as soon as I ran out of shit to rig or draw, I started bored eating, man. So, so I, dangerous. You have become the dangerous mad scientist. Mm -hmm. Like, you have fulfilled your, like, your creator's vision. I, I really step into their <laughs> shoes. I really have to stay constantly stimulated or else I'll do some stupid shit. 
Oh, you I have, have like... a golden mystery snail too named Gary. Oh, I yeah. love mystery snails. Mm. God, that that's so precious. The, the, the way they, they just munch. Oh, <laughs> the way snails munch is so precious. It's very cute. Oh, the, the, the way that they just curl their mouths around things to eat them. They're just... I, I want to put little blushy marks and sugoi eyes on them. <laughs> uh, back in high school... Uh, no, this is this is dumb, but me and a couple uh, of friends used to, used to, like, Photoshop sharks and, and give them, like, anime eyes and, and blushy faces. Sundere <laughs> sharks. Just, like, for no reason. Just because it was Th funny. That is... There is an entire subreddit called Sundere Sharks that does oh, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, honestly, that might have been where it started. At the time, <laughs> I probably didn't even know that Reddit existed. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay. You know that hmm. a while ago, like way like back in high school, um, my brother and a bunch of his friends and I went on to like Sonic OC creators and made our own like shitty like purposefully shitty sonic ocs and there was a moment where like my brother made his like everyone else made made theirs and like they are very clearly sonic characters but cory's uh mccory's my brother mm. um his looked like it was baked like it's uh, its eyes were red and bloodshot Do you have pictures of these guys these little dudes i i don't have the individuals Aww. but i do i do have something that was created with them oh so you can have them hold okay. on let me see if i can find the final or battleist <laughs> the final or battle some day chat we'll make like a sonic oc on stream <laughs> i oh okay, i i know where it is i know where it is uh here we go um here we go i'm searching in a group chat as image or did i download it if I downloaded it, I am going to... No, I found it! 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 <sighs> I feel like Same. weed Sonic OCs are too easy. I think mine's going to be a ketamine addict. <laughs> We're doing ketamine up in the Netherlands. <laughs> fucking love... I fucking love that song. Boot cut jeans, salmon short, I have a skin routine, and my elbows hurt. I don't give blood. Because I won't give blood. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's an incredible. It's an incredible song called "Your Dad's Best Friend." Okay. Noted. I bought a tarantula off a Swedish guy. He helped me out in Stockholm with a DUI, and I stalk Ian Brown <laughs> when he comes to town. <laughs> hold on, hold on. One of my mods. Uh, I posted the Sonic OC I made in middle school unironically in Discord two nights ago. Want me to send you it? Yes, please! Oh, I, 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 oh my god. I, okay, so Atrocity Guy just messaged me on Discord, oh. uh, ga uh, gave me the the next move in our correspondence game, Rook A to D1, and then said, just finished the new vid, by the way, just waiting on a thumbnail I commissioned from one of the artists who work on the Dolphin House video. <gasps> and then I meant... Like, then I accidentally sent her this with no <laughs> other context. Wait, I she'll, meant she'll to send correspondence it to you. game? I she'll. meant to send it to you. Wait, this is really good. Hold on. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> the final battle. <laughs> I love you, Corey. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> it's, it's Elise, Corey. Corey's now wife, then girlfriend. Holy shit. How do I... Okay, I need to resize this. Yo, so you you and Atrocity Guy are working on a correspondence game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're playing a game of correspondence, Jeff. Oh, that's what you meant by correspondence game. Okay, I was yeah, like, yeah. shill, shill, shill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Yo, Atrocity Guy's Dolphin House video chat, if you haven't seen it, you, like, you, it's you so got good. it. No, it's so good. Atrocity it's so Guide good. is just down the rabbit hole. It's an absolute better. nightmare. <laughs> it's so good. I know my place. Uh, let's see. One of my mods sent me their unironic Sonic OC okay. that they drew in middle school. Oh, oh, honey. <laughs> oh. Meet Sonic cousin, cousin Zero, the Procopin. <laughs> Procopin. Pro Procopin. Oh. 
it's metal Brock hattie Lupin. this is beautiful you were 12 i love him ain't no way ain't no way no hold on hold on hard stop Metal Hattie, when I was 12, I was trying to write novels. Are you sure you were 12? Like... <laughs> Wait, like, like 12 was like 7th grade for me. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Sonic Cousin. Zero the Procopin. Procopin. Um, <clears throat> I love him. Let's see. I, I I don't have any of these pictures anymore. But when I was in uh, early middle school, uh, I had some friends that were bronies. So there was a point chat where I made a pony OC to try to fit in with them. You know, Aww. you were very special. I know, Middle Hattie. I know you're very special. <laughs> shout out to shout out to my mod, Metal Hattie. <laughs> Yeah, that was like a pretty intense call out. It's like you made this when you were twelve. <laughs> wow, you were shit. Like, <laughs> wow, you fucking suck. <laughs> uh, it's it's okay. You should be retroactively ashamed. <laughs> I, uh, it's it's okay. We have a mutual bully culture here a little bit. <laughs> It's okay. What was the cutie mark? Oh, do you guys want to know? It's really I wanna cringe. Know. It's I so wanna cringe. Know. Okay, Come so I, I, I had never seen any My Little Pony, and to this day, I still haven't. Uh, but some of my friends were really into it in middle school, so I did make an edgy pony OC that was called, like, her name was, like, Incandescent White or some shit, and her cutie mark was a syringe because she was a mad scientist. <laughs> That is incredible. <laughs> kind of cute, though. I I, I, th I I thought it was adorable. That that no that that is actually kind of precious. It's you're trying to fit. Like I, I appreciate you're trying to fit in, but you're also trying to be yourself. I'm, I'm trying to fit in, but I'm also like fucked in the head. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, yo, I, I might have to walk away from stream for just a second, because okay. I, I, I gotta use the bathroom, I have no water, okay. and it is, we are approaching hangry hour, it's coming okay. up on us, it's so, coming. uh, let's send, uh, would you like to go to just a cold mic screen for, like, five minutes? Uh, yeah, I'd be fine with that, I'll... I'll get myself a, a nibble. Okay, well. awesome! Uh, we will be back very, very soon, chat. Uh, just oh, like no. five- What? Huh? Atrocity guides responding. <gasps> she just and she said, "I love the drastic variation of resolutions among the clip art." <laughs> and I just replied in all caps. I didn't mean to send that. I'm excited for your video. I meant to send to send that to someone else. Holy I, shit! I, <laughs> she just said, "I'm laughing so hard right now." I I want to point out mm. in the final battle, um, if if you look at Corey's my brother's fan hog, the one who looks like he is completely stoned, the okay. reason so, uh, his girlfriend, which who would later become his wife, uh, looked very closely and said it and said, Corey, those aren't eyes, those are mouths. Oh, oh, my God. brother accidentally used mouths for the eyes entirely unintentionally he was like why do, why do these eyes look so weird dude he looks fucked up oh no whatever he has like it's simultaneously making him feel amazing and giving him super speed this is my ketamine maybe, hog <laughs> maybe he had super speed oh he's literally on speed like like speed is sonic's name but Corey's fan hog is on speed Holy shit. It's wholesome. It's wholesome. I love it. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Okay. Okay. okay <gasps> we'll be back in like five minutes, chat. I really am like, oh my God. I'm like desperate right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we're we're going to end hangry and we're going to be back. We're going to be back going less to... hangry. All right. We're going to slurp our way back into the mystery flesh pit. Okay. All right. See so you guys in like five minutes or less. Okay. Cool. Cool.
we're back what's up gamers <laughs> i hope you got your gamer fuel welcome to our mystery flesh pit let's play part two <laughs> number 14 baba booey <laughs> every waking moment is pain and agony and i cannot wait for the inevitable <laughs> demise that will claim us all <laughs> among us <laughs> I got I have Sorry, I stole that. I have my ultimate guilt snack here, which is literally just white bread with butter on it. <laughs> oh my god, you are so valid. It's I so will, good. It, it's I, completely like, different. Look, mm. I have like 0% body fat. Mm -hmm. And so like when I don't have calories in me, mm -hmm. I just do not function because there's nothing to burn. I just like to and... role play as a as a medieval peasant. <laughs> Mm, butter on my bread. <laughs> the <laughs> finest quality oh. butter in all the town. Look, can I 
Mm. Can I can I like confess something that mm. I I don't think I have ever told like any public public yes? group when I was little. Mm -hmm. I Did loved the Belgariad and the oh. Malorian. Their fantasy series by David Eddings. I'm not very into fantasy anymore, okay. but I loved those series when I was growing up. And something that the characters always ate mm. on on the road when they were traveling was uh, bread and cheese. Ah. Oh. And when I was little, classic. When I wanted meal. a snack, mm -hmm. I would eat bread and cheese and pretend, like in my head, oh. that I was traveling during the belt, like That's with the party so in the Bulgaria. So cute. I get... <laughs> <laughs> and can, can I level with you? Yeah. About something else? Yeah. I never really stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I, man. It still gives me those good feelings. Hey, I, just I don't, I don't blame you, man. God, wish we could go back. <laughs> oh, the good old days. That's so I... cute. <laughs> those classic peasant meals. They, they hit good. Yeah. Do you have like? Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't know if you're as much of a butter on bread, bread, <laughs> bread fanatic as I am. But like, is there like a specific kind of butter that you have to get, or else it's not right? Um, not, not in particular. Like my, my family grew up with, like I grew up with sweet cream butter. Oh, which, interesting. Which is like unsalted. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I discovered the world of salted butter, I just never looked back. Dude, Lando, Lando Lakes though. Lando Lakes. Lando Lakes butter is actually good. My, my guys. Like actually oh my God. It's so good. Although like the, the thing is, mm -hmm animal product like dairy and eggs and stuff when you're out in the country like it's always better oh okay like you if you can if you can if you're out in the country it's just like oh yeah just the farm down the corner just brought these over this morning damn i i i can't say i've ever had anything like that uh mm. no no not really that no, sounds it, nice it's though fantastic yeah in like you, you I, I, I go to Austria, right? I, I learned about the Austrian wine poisoning from people in Austria. Um, oh, hmm. I yeah. Dude, I, that was such a fucking fascinating video. I still recommend that to people. I I'm I'm so glad. I there was someone who was familiar with um the with the wine poisoning was around during it, saw the video, and was like, "Yeah, it was a good video, but man, this dude doesn't even know the half of it." Like, oh shit! There was more? more fucking insane. There is no way there was more. <laughs> gets more insane <laughs> wait <laughs> would you ever think about it like i don't know if this is invasive would you do a part two if it was that crazy there's a part of me like when my german gets better and i can like read all of the books myself i want to dig into it and be like and like there's a part of me that really wants to that's like, oh that's so exciting that'd be so it would be okay you know what would be cool mm -hmm. if I, I go to austria and interview people at wine colleges who went through it oh man and like translate it that would be so fucking so yeah. fucking cool yeah oh this I'm, I'm leaving out because well Austrian wine is so good now by the way it's it's like nectar oh uh, if you like if you ever ever find yourself in Austria find a Buschenschank mm -hmm. uh, or like they're called different things um, they're basically like they're like restaurants on farms except they don't cook anything it's just like uh, food vegetables oil like meat cured meat all stuff that they make there okay, or like is from right. a near, another nearby farm. Um, and one of the big things they do is serve the wine that they make, like on that farm. Oh my and God. It is that sounds invariably, awesome. It is invi invariably incredible. Like always. I think my life experience with anything outside of like two specific states is super limited. Um, I, I, I really like, like mead. <laughs> Mead's lovely. No, mm, mead definitely. Mm, yeah, lovely. but I can never find it anywhere. It's so oh. hard to find in, at least in the area I'm in now. It's basically impossible, and that, that oh. fucking sucks, man. God, I, man, good mead is lovely. It really is. If you can, if you can find oh, it, like if you, if you, if you go to a store, good pomegranate mead. 
Oh, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> like, honey mead is surprisingly light a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, it's refreshing. Mm hmm. Exactly. Oh. This my own? I don't know if I'm allowed. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd translate if I understood. <laughs> hold, hold on, boys. I'm gonna. We have to sit through this, or else I'm gonna get hangry. Okay, and you don't want me hangry. I'm here for it. it it's it's okay. Mm -hmm. You, like the. What what do I know? Hold on. What do I have memorized? I don't know if I I'm have... allowed to make mead. I, I, I with my condo association. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In the bathtub, bootlegging mead. Just the. That <clears throat> might be like. Oh, you! Oh, one the of my mods. The whitest thing is that the whitest thing possible. <laughs> Brewing mead in the bathtub. Maybe it's. Hold on. One of my mods says that he knows somebody who makes mead, and he made like fifty gallons for a wedding, and he he would uh, give me some information. Dude, that would be awesome, but I really don't think I have the room for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Someday when I have my own place, I would really like a house so that I can get like a cat. <laughs> That's like one of the mm. only reasons I want a house. <laughs> a cat and then so maybe valid. I can distill some mead. <laughs> Cats and mead. Mm -hmm. I no that then then you could call it cat mead. It's Cats super mead. easy. Mead is really easy. How long does it take? Is it? Wait, all right, let, let's let's do another kind of deep dive. Uh, actually, uh, maybe we should go back to the flesh pit, but- I, I was about to say, like, how ready are you to take mead brewing advice from chat? I'm I'm pretty ready. I, I think my, ready? my chat's pretty, uh, they're pretty, uh, how do I put it? I don't really know. I could, I trust they're them good, about a lot of things, you know? Yeah, I, I they're feel good. like I've got a pretty good chat. Too. Yeah, I really like, my uh, chat's so well behaved. No, I- I think, like, not linking my YouTube to my Twitch was one of the best decisions I made. Mm. Because it means that I have, like, I, I could get way more viewers if I, like, advertised it on, on YouTube. <clears throat> but that would mean I'm dragging in literally everyone. Dude, and um, yeah. let's say there would be a lot of bycatch. Yeah, I I, I I definitely understand the sort of fear behind that because, mm -hmm. like, I definitely, for an example, wouldn't live stream on YouTube. That sounds like an absolute no. nightmare. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's terrifying. The process, like, I did it a few times and it was okay, um, but I had I have no desire to go back. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys are well behaved. I know you guys say that you like bully me and gaslight me and everything, but like, it's it's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you only need a five-gallon bucket, like a sterile five-gallon bucket to mm. make mead, and that's it. Okay, so maybe I do have wow. room. Wait. Okay. Maybe I do have room to make... How do I make mead? I, I, I think... I, I think... <gasps> oh my god, Fred, you also have a fun emote! <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. God bless. Yeah, if you're from my chat, show your grabbies. <laughs> I, okay, th there's a thing. There's a thing that my chat does. Yeah? Where, like, oh, yeah, you're seeing it. Where they, like, put two feet up and then, like, one of the emotes. Oh, I, I see. So it's like a like common. a kickback emote. Yeah, yeah. I see. It's just, like, it's, like, feet in air emote. Yeah, see, like, on the right, you have the feet, feet, then the ah emote. Yeah. That is very common. That is very common. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> hold on. I, it looks like I can buy... I, I, I don't think I'm going to buy a kit, but you can technically buy a mead-making kit off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. I do not trust any alcohol that comes off of Amazon. Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just a kit, Are you kit, kidding though. me? Like, th mm. there is at least a 5% chance that you go blind. Hold on. R slash homebrewing. Wait a minute. This isn't D&D. <laughs> Speaking of which, I started... I don't know. I, I've been really bored lately. So I'm trying to, like, homebrew, like, my own sort of fantasy world. It's really fun, mm -hmm. but it's so fucking daunting to start. It's so spooky. Have you ever... Are you into that kind of thing? 
Um, I, I used to be a lot more. Now I'm I, I'm a lot less interested in world building. I when I write something, it usually um is non-fictional or like mm. obviously, um or it's um it's much more plot centric. Like I'm working on rewriting some of my old stories from my book right now. Mm. Like that my my little book I self published back before down the rabbit hole was a thing. You want to shill it? Uh, you don't have to if you don't want yet. to. Oh, oh um, but, okay. But I, I am I am actually writing um, a novel though with uh, with someone that is written in the style of a nonfiction work. It's like the history of humanity after FTL travel was discovered. Oh, I fucking so it's, I fucking love like mockumentary stuff like that. It's one of my oh, favorites. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's it's full of um, footnotes that are like they're little bits about the world. It's like this person uh pioneered this thing right like mm. just a little note so little things that flesh out the world um that sounds really that's, cool yeah. yo I, nordic thank you for the five gifted subs i super super appreciate it man thank you i i should not have said the word footnotes <laughs> christ that was a mistake i i the moment that mm. i said it i realized what i had done <laughs> Uh, do we have more, more, more slide, more we, oh, mystery we hole? We abs no, we absolutely do. But I also have mm. a response from Atrocity Guide. <gasps> you do. Um, okay. So Atrocity Guide said, "I love the drastic variation of resolutions among the clip art." And I said, "I didn't mean to send that. I'm excited for your video. I meant to send that to someone else." And Atrocity Guide <laughs> said, I'm laughing so hard right now, but now you have to give me context. I'm invested in the final battle. <laughs> I'm invested too. Oh. And then, like, mm -hmm. I'm sad that we don't have the sequel, the final or battleist. <laughs> uh, chat asked if we've seen All Tomorrows. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with All Tomorrows. I'm, I'm reading through it with Mike, actually. Mm. Oh, I'm, cool. I'm working my way through it. Yeah, I it's... haven't like read read it, but I'm like familiar with it. I've seen a lot of YouTube. I saw mm. I saw the YouTube video where somebody rated the all tomorrow's uh, creatures by like least to like <laughs> most fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I saw one that was um the one that would be the best gamer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I mean I can imagine that it's it's the abyssal copepod because he's got hands. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Right. Like how are you gonna wazda without hands? <laughs> Just face smash it. I would okay, okay, no no, you know what? Hmm. Some of these bacteria mm -hmm. with all of their like appendages, imagine Gamers. being able to game and have a finger on every single key at mm. once. Wait, they could be gaming. Yeah. Oh my god. How fast your bacteria re how fast can we breed them? Can we evolve them into pro gamers? Holy like shit. new esports. You could grow an entire WoW rating B party. Esports, bacteria sports, okay? Oh oh my god, could you could you imagine you could get a Barotrauma crew together just in the blink of an eye? Oh my god. Time. We could hire them as bots, like not like bots, but like bots, like you know, <laughs> if you're lonely, you have 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 our, <laughs> our 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 gamer bacteria. <laughs> right, a bot farm takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> gamer bacteria is what the doctor told me when I went in the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I am gamer bacteria. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost Maybe it's done with better my than snack. Gamer fungus. All right, no, we we have so much more. Like literally, this is an endless pit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not funny. Well, I mean, it's not an endless. Like it'll pop out on the other side of the earth. Maybe. I mean, no, actually, I maybe not that big. Still really well, big. Well, that. That's the thing. There are theories about what this creature is, mm -hmm. and if it does originate from Earth. Mm -hmm then that means that there are probably more. And mm -hmm. one of the theories is that this is just one that has made its way up higher oh. into the Earth's crust. I wonder, I mean, the crust isn't that deep though, right? I mean, it's like it's like mm -hmm. pretty deep, but it's like a, what, like 11 miles or something? It's not as, yeah, it's not as deep as you would think. 
Yeah, so it's it just, I, I struggle to think, because <laughs> I could have just ended the sentence there, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but, but, like, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't they get hurt by the magma? Unless they're, that's like... That's the question. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the big question. Maybe th there are so many questions. But there is, um, there have been some, there's been some drilling to try to learn about the Permian Basin superorganism. Uh, and here they are. Oh, I see. Awesome. Uh, also, yeah. Nordic Savage, thank you again for another five gifted subs. I super, super appreciate it. Thank you. Hell yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome. Okay, let's see here. So, uh... This, uh... Huh. Yeah, this, I like how the Sonic OC has become the background. <laughs> Those aren't those aren't eyes. Those are mouths. I'll never forget just the horror in Elise's voice. It's a few thousand miles she was, from score. Yeah, she, yeah. She gave a laugh that said, "You're such an idiot, and I love you." <laughs> Yo, thank you for the five gifted subs, Burv man. Thank you so much. All right, what in the world am I work looking at here? Okay, so this is a cross-section of the Earth, mm -hmm. 40 kilometers down into the crust, or, um, or into, like, into the Earth. Mm. Um, and all of these lines are boreholes that they have made, and uh, they are stratified based on what was at that level. So you can see at the very top of each of these uh, boreholes, there's geologic strata, rock, okay. right? rock soil mud then uh below that in uh invariably i believe yeah invariably there is nominal organic tissue which is normal normal flesh pit stuff oh, right it, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. flesh pit meat mm -hmm. but then you'll notice that there is a third kind exotic of, tissue yep there's exotic tissue i don't remember where to find it but there they talk a little bit about it there is if you go deep enough mm. into the uh, the Permian Basin superorganism, then you start to find meat that does not resemble anything else. Because if you look at the mystery flesh pit, it's sort of it, it all resembles um, yeah. normal biological things. Mm -hmm. Th like there are organs that are recognizable and have recognizable functions, but the exotic tissue is something else entirely that is inscrutable really like <clears throat> like there isn't even like a it's just what they they can't even describe it as like oh it's white or oh it's yeah red. it's well it's it doesn't resemble any living thing okay hmm. that there, there is a little bit more information about it okay uh somewhere somewhere oh i'm all out of snack Oh. You know what? We were just talking about this the other stream. Uh, you ever did you grow up on Muddy Buddies or Puppy Chow? Yes. Oh my fucking yes. god! There were people in my chat that had never heard of it before, and I I, I was really really craving that uh, nostalgia kick, so I bought like a bag of them the other day, and I still have some I, crumbs in here. Um, I I had a girlfriend in high school mm. who would make her own Muddy Buddies and oh. share them with friends. That that is the way to make friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chew on my own chitin. I am a snack. Yeah, let me just let me just put, fucking put my whole leg into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Humph. Fit, eat feet. Okay, mm. I. Th there was I, I remember there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for like the PlayStation, and there was a cheat code you do, you could put in so that you could do a particular move over and over again. Um, th there was a move that one of them could do. It was who's the one with the nunchucks? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. Know. I didn't I, have cable growing up. <laughs> neither did I. I. I didn't have cable or, or satellite. Mike like, just... Michelangelo. Oh wait, holy shit! I was okay. right. <laughs> I don't know nice. shit about. <laughs> Anyways, um, but one of them he would twirl his nunchucks and start kicking and just yell "Eat feet," and that was what? 
the that that was the attack like right. he was kicking and he told him to eat feet but if you did that attack over and over again using the cheat code he would just yell eat feet eat feet eat feet eat feet eat feet just constantly oh <laughs> man yikes <laughs> That shit wouldn't fly in my chat. I mean, on no, my it... stream. I have to. I have to keep you guys under control. In line. Yeah. I where. I I don't know that I'm going to be able to find information about the uh, exotic matter. Oh, uh, that's okay. Un... That's okay. I I apologize. There's plenty. Uh, I'm very interested in this exotic tissue, though. Yo, Nordic Savage, thank you uh, for another five gifted subs. Thank you so much. Another one. <laughs> another one. Another DJ one. Khaled! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I... Let me see. I think... I'm trying to remember where the information about the about the exotic tissue was. Mm -hmm. um, it might actually be in the 2007 incident report. Uh, somebody says there's some info on exotic tissue on the Flesh Pit YouTube channel. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Like that that's not really what I'm after though. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh like because there is writing about it <laughs> that is helpful. You know what? What if I just search? What if I just search? <laughs> I may not be smart, but this isn't real, right? No, it's a it's a fictional uh national park. Here we go. Maybe maybe someone links it. Uh Oh, is it in the Q and A one? Uh, exotic. Got it. Okay, I have it. It was in the first Q and A. A lot of this information is in the Q and A's and okay. isn't immediately. It doesn't immediately visually pop out. But the first question in the first Q and A asks, "How deep is the pit?" Mm -hmm. And they respond. The depth record for a human was achieved in 1979 by an expedition team which was able to reach an unprecedented depth of 19,102 19, meters below the entry orifice, surpassing the previously held record, uh, held 1976 record of 12,117 meters. At depths below 19,000 meters, so 19 kilometers, yeah. the anatomy of the pit begins to noticeably change and become much less anatomically similar to other surface forms of life. Explorations beyond these depths are extremely challenging due to the exotic and largely unknown nature of the pit's lower anatomy. Unmanned expendable probe vehicles have been able to surpass the 19,000 meter depth, but poor communications quality over anything but tether cables have made further exploration cost prohibitive. Hello, Takahata. Oh, what's up, Taka? How are you doing, buddy? Hello, hi, surprise. Oh my god, we got raided. Oh shit, I have my yes. alerts off. <laughs> That's... That, that is why I called it out. <laughs> Yo, thank you. Thank you for the raid, Taka. Thank you. Uh, uh, if you guys uh, don't know me already, hi, my name is Juniper. I am a Luna Moth amalgamation, and this is... Hi, I'm Frederick Knudsen. I make down the rabbit hole on YouTube, but sometimes I'm a gremlin on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. And we're talking about the mystery flesh pit. We're getting meaty. And going on tangents. We're getting oh, no. yeah, meaty like... with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like half of this stream has been us talking about like Sonic OCs yes. with <laughs> mouths for eyes and and snails. Like... Mm-hmm. I love a good snail. I love a good, good classic cringe Sonic OC. They're my favorite. I, I uh, love... Let's yeah, see. there's a little bit more mm. uh, to this. We're just talking about the exotic tissue once you get past 19 kilometers down into the Earth's crust. Mm -hmm. Communication quality over anything else, but tether cables have made further exploration. It's hypothesized that it may extend into the Earth's mantle, with many scientists suggesting that the organism may be native to the interior of the planet, having really surfaced the upper tectonic plates for unknown reasons. Ah, uh, okay, that does that makes yeah. more sense. I, hmm... Oh, I want to know about the exotic tissue. Can I eat it? Yeah. Can I put it in my mouth? There's not a whole lot of information about it. Mm, that's all right. That's okay. Hold on. 19,000 meters. How Mariana Trench is only like 11,000, right? Uh, I forget precisely. Let me check super quick. 
French Dap. Very on the French. Go. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, eleven eleven thousand meters. I was actually right on the mark. Holy shit. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I was studying to be a marine biologist in college. <gasps> Dude, no first. fucking and... way! I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I but... also really, really wanted to go into marine biology, but ended up going in a different direction at some point. Oh no, me too. I actually almost went to Alaska uh, to study. Yo! Uh, ended up being a good thing that I didn't. I struggled with chemistry uh, yeah, pretty badly. Me too! I, I... <laughs> Hold on, sorry. Go on, go on. God, not the only... Okay, I, I think if I had taken a year or two off of college, I would have been okay. Mm. Um, But I just... After high school, I was already burnt out. Like, I needed time. Uh, but I didn't get it, and so I burnt out. But instead, I ended up going into literature and writing. And uh, that's turned out pretty well, I'd say. Dude, uh, you have, like... We it. have, like, the same backstory, which is Seriously? fucking, <laughs> fucking wild. Because I also uh, went to college to study biology, uh, eventually to study marine biology. Uh, the difference is that I actually was really good at chemistry in high school, but when I started taking the college-level chemistry course, I had the worst professor I've ever had in my life, and he was so bad, and I learned so little that I think I got worse at chemistry and just barely scraped by the class and that made me change my entire major i man it's when it doesn't click right it's it's like sometimes you have a good teacher and they help make it work and then you get a bad teacher and it's like wow this is not natural like, yeah it, it's not natural for me yeah. writing was like God, I'm so sorry. That's no, rough. it's it's okay. I'm pretty happy with where I am. I have my yeah. degree in paralegals or legal studies on the on the wall that I don't use, <laughs> but it's a good and now you're falling on. back point. <laughs> ah, Nordic, thank you for the ten gifted subs. Thank you so much. Is that twenty five total now? I think so. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, th there it is, twenty five total in the channel. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, dude, that was That's... that was no joke. One bad professor can really just change the entire mm. course of your life. God, yeah, <sighs> I, I'm fortunate for the for the path that my life took. Mm. Like, I'm happy for it. Me too. Now, I, I, that's so funny. That's so funny that we had such a similar experience. Mm -hmm. What the hell? No, I'm I'm happy with where I am. I do like sometimes like obviously I'm I'm very young. I can just go back to college at some point and maybe try to pursue marine biology for for kicks at some point, but mm -hmm. as long as long as I'm supporting myself and able to pay my rent and buy groceries, that's uh, that's a win. That's a W. That's yeah. a fat W for me. No, that that's absolutely valid. I think like something that's really nice about what what both of us do at this point is we can do it from anywhere. Yeah. Like we have an internet connection. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. I'm happy. It's flexible. Mm hmm. Oh, so exotic tissue. Yes, meat. Deep in mantle, meat. The meat beckons. I'm just like having such a good time chatting. It's easy to go like uh, to just like start talking. Yeah, I You're very yeah, I easy get you. to talk. With. <laughs> I could talk more shit about my college experience, but I'm I'm not gonna. <laughs> I I I had like a really nice experience mm -hmm. once I moved into literature because it was all in one building. Like it was tiny. I, I went oh to honestly, Oregon. me too. Yeah. I went to Oregon State University, and like that the literature program was like super underrated. Is like, oh my god, it's so good. Okay, no, we're doing the thing that we said we weren't <gasps> meat, gonna do. Meat, Fuck. meat, 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 meat. Uh, did the Burger King ever open up in the visitor center? I vaguely remember hearing about a special king's crown you could nab there. The renovated lower wait, visitor wait. center. Oh, oh, oh so it, it's in the. It, it's the third question. Third in question. The first All right, thank you. The renovated lower visitor center opened in 1995 with the addition of an expanded and fully enclosed main concourse for commercial vendors. On opening day, the lower visitor center contained only three food vendors, a small convenience style store, a full service trader Vix, and an airport style Burger King. Oh, I love airport but, style fast food places. It's play, just good I, memories. Okay, I do too. <laughs> Plans for a rainforest cafe never advanced beyond initial talks with the park service. Oh no, they never got a rainforest cafe. Wait, hold on. Did you, you know what I'm going to ask, right? 
<laughs> have you seen what? the the recent like videos that have been on YouTube? Like I went to every rainforest cafe, like those. No. Oh, they were I'm, they like, were charming. Very... I'm I'm very like I I am boomer level at sometimes with like how little I know. Man, I'm disappointed they never added a rainforest cafe to the mystery flesh pit. I did moist enough. Also, what the fuck is Trader Vix? Is I'm, that like Trader Joe's? I know Trader Joe's. But... <laughs> what is Trader Vix? Oh, oh my god, I have the hiccups. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll, cover. Ah! <laughs> I'll cover. Uh, twas Brillig and the slithy toes hid Geyer and Gimbal in the wave. Oh shit! They, they can't hear it. All Mims, you were the Borogovs. Oh, that was so great. Dude, I, I I love airport style fast food place. Like like uh, maybe it's just because of like the the associations of like getting off a plane, you're on layover, go get yourself a yeah. milkshake and a burger. Oh, it just it's comfy for me. Yes, I okay no, I I think it's because riding on planes always was equated with adventure. Yeah, exactly. And and if you're stopping to get food, you're all you're you're already, adventuring. <laughs> yeah, you're you're adventuring, but you're early, so you don't even have to worry. Nordic Savage is flexing. Yo, again. Nordic Savage, thank you for the other uh, another five. Thank you so much for the thirty. I super appreciate it. Gosh, it's mm. the number ticks up. This is the first time that they've ever gifted, apparently, too. So, like, we've got a live count of how much they've done this stream. Yo, thank you, man. Thank you. Chad energy. <laughs> Let's I... see. Hmm. So, something else that I think would be fun to look at. So, we've looked at the pit itself. Yeah. But something we haven't talked a lot about yet is the way that it was exploited. Um, and the resources of it were exploited. Mm. Um, and I think that a great place to start is by looking at the different kinds of people that worked in the Mystery Flesh Pit. You're gonna have to zoom All in. All right, one. yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see, we got... Oh, fuck, here, I am gonna have to resize that again. <laughs> one, of these, it, one of these is, like, darker than the others, I would say. I am... Uh, so it gets down. a little real, but it's okay. All right. Hey, we got park rangers, you know, uh, law enforcement, wildlife rescue, just a good old wholesome park ranger. We got interpretive rangers. They use uh, uh, useful historical and cultural information, also give presentations. Uh, we got a guide ranger who ex uh, helps you explore off trail. Oh, fuck. We got a... Uh, oh, can I... How do I... God! Ah! Ah! It's so, okay? I, I, yeah, I just, for whatever reason, scrolling sideways on my browser just don't work. Uh, oh. We got a medic ranger. Uh, if you get injured, medic ranger will come fix you up, take you back. We got a technician uh, that takes care of all the infrastructure within the park. We got a fucking, uh, we got a miner. <laughs> Above the age of 18. Uh, the workers you see wearing yellow outfits are mining personnel who are working to extract precious bodily fluids, tissues, and other resources from within the specially designated areas of the Mystery Flesh Pit. If you see mining activity within a park trail, tell a park ranger or dial 15 on a trail. What? Wait, why do they need to tell park rangers about that? They're not supposed to They're be there. They're not supposed probably. to be there. Oh, yeah. no. So, I think, what's ha I think what's happening in that case is, um, Anodyne is responsible for a lot of the um, harvesting, for like all of the harvesting of the materials. Mm. And if they're on the, the nature trails, they're they're stepping past their boundaries. Oh, so okay. I, I think that this implies that um, the National Park Service is having such a, like they're struggling so much with Anodyne and they're just hyper aggressive gathering of resources that they're getting people to rat on them god damn yeah yeah that makes sense because like i said we're, we're getting into the exploitation of resources uh from the mystery flesh pit and um anodyne does not come away looking super squeaky clean no not really hold I on think... someone just told me my music is a little loud oh that should be better Am I a little quiet still? Am I okay? 
I don't know, you sound fine to me. Am I okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I, I think, like, the, the darkest part of all of these, though, is the laborer. Yeah, which I, uh, about to get to the surveyor. Uh, they're like, underground astronauts who bravely venture into the unknown parts of the mystery flesh pit. If you see one getting ready for descent, give them a wave. Many surveying expeditions require spending several weeks or even months deep within the abyss. We got ourselves some trail engineers who opened up new passages for trail development while also maintaining existing hiking routes by trimming excess tissue growth. And we got our laborer. Uh, building things inside the mystery flesh pit is a tough job. Fortunately, these hard working ob obreros are happy to work in some of the messiest parts of the pit in order to provide a better life for their families. Habla espanol, bro. These are f <laughs> bro. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Like, do we even oh, need? Yeah. Do we even need to say it? <laughs> I... Oh, oh! Did you think that the harvesting of material from the mystery flesh pit was going to be an ethical thing? <laughs> Oh my god. Oopsie daisy. Oopsie. Oh, they don't have any protective equipment. Hey, fuck these guys. Oh my god. <laughs> and then scientists, like, you, they study. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> They're scientists. <laughs> Damn. They're... <laughs> Habla espanol. Habla espanol. <laughs> Yikes. God. <laughs> it's dark. It's really dark. Mm -hmm. No, it's the mystery flesh pit gets uh gets messy. And in fact, um, th there are some there are some interesting curiosities that come out of it though, like the wetware computers. The wetware computers. Let me open that. You up. can't find a more powerful computer in this century. Only a few years ago, large data processing tasks were the domain of bulky, powerful, and expensive mainframe systems. Now, in 1984, Anodyne has introduced the world's first desktop supercomputer. Oh no, I remember these! Utilizing state-of-the-art neural interface technology derived from the nervous tissue of the Permian Basin superorganism, uh, the AD1 huh, represents a new era in home and business computing. How powerful is the AD1? Try 8 million floating point operations per second. Not impressed? Add 4 terabytes of organic tissue memory storage. 12 gigabytes of RAM, and inbuilt interfacing ca capability with every major software developer on the market. If these don't sell you on the AD1, then the low price point and low maintenance costs will. Contact your local computer retailer to schedule a demonstration of the AD1. One of the many lucrative results of the development of the Mystery Flash Pit were tremendous advances in the field of computer science and cybernetics. The American conglomerate Anodyne Inc. pioneered the design and development of wetware computing in the early 1980s by harvesting live nervous tissue from the Permian Basin superorganism. The processing capabilities provided by these living tissues were decades ahead of technology at the time and allowed Anodyne a brief commanding share of an already saturated computer market. While the user interface of these computers were similar to other machines at the time, the resource requirements necessary to power the electrical systems, as well as the living tissue support systems, made them expensive to operate and almost impossible to repair with that highly specialized equipment. Following the 2007 incident, which permanently closed the pit and plunged the company into bankruptcy, Anodyne was forced to dissolve its cybernetics division and related assets. Today, even late model wetware machines are rare to find outside of computer museums as maintaining the internal organic tissues of these computers has been made effectively impossible with a loss of the proprietary knowledge and equipment after Anodyne was shuttered. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> there, are, there are some fascinating applications. I all, This... This one almost is weirder to me just because it's more mundane. Yeah, it's just creepy, you know? Like the, Can uh, we... The, this, well, the, the, the computer is amazing, but the, the fact that they harvested stuff to make cleaning supplies <laughs> is goddamn hilarious. <laughs> uh, people are asking about the 2007 incident. We will get to the 2007 we'll get incident. To it. it's, no, we, it's we, the big we've one. We've got to. Yeah. yeah, we've got. I, I, I feel like that's sort of the capstone of the stream, mm -hmm. right? 
Totally. We have what else? What what is this? Here we go. Um I love this. Would would you would you uh would mm -hmm. you mind if I if I read this out? Yeah, of course. This, this wonderful bit. So this yes. is I now that we've sort of dug into the flesh pit and we've learned a little bit about it, we're we're digging into some of the um some of what anodyne has done to extract it and this is particularly interesting this is from october of 1975 mm. miss frost please excuse my remarks but i am more than surprised after finding out about your interview with the austin sun after you accused me of just about every kind of violation of nature possible my crew and i graciously went out of our way to give you and your friends a personal tour of every aspect of our operation down in gumption i believe if you would have asked anyone present during that tour they would be more than inclined to believe that things were capital a all right even amicable so imagine my shock when today I read that myself and the hard-working folks at Anodyne are a cohort of blunt and thoroughly thoughtless rabble engaged in the systematic torture and rape of the greatest natural discovery in a generation. Now I get that you and I see the world differently, and that's okay. But to say those kinds of things is an outright lie. As I told you during our first meeting, we are doing the best we can to minimize our impact on this creature. But we also have to protect ourselves and the scientists who go down to study it. Even you yourself were a little shaky being down there with the passages reinforced. Just to show you that my head isn't as dense as you make it out to be in your interview, I asked the Anodyne folks about why they weren't handing o over the pit to some university or government research outfit, and they said they're just doing a routine exploration of mineral exploration. Ex I think exploitation is what mm -hmm. he meant. I know that hearing that'll make you red in the face, but they wanted me to assure you and the general public that those explorations are mostly a formality to justify their research costs to the corporate bean counters and that they don't really expect to find anything down there beyond some wholesome, natural science. Wholesome. Mm -hmm. And, despite what you said in your paper... They wanted me to make sure you understand that they only want what is best for the organism as they try and make some sense out of it, and to suggest that they plan to allow visitors to go down into it and even commercialize the pit is almost as ridiculous as your claim that I am a cowboy who is just in this for the money. Ha <laughs> ha! So crazy! Crazy Rachel Frost from Greenpeace Foundation! Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Why would why would we commercialize the pit? Why? Why? Why, why ever? <laughs> Regards, James Jackson. P.S. I will be in Austin for a few days next month. Maybe you could apologize to me in person over dinner. What a fucking bitch! <laughs> what? I know. James! James! <laughs> God! <laughs> <laughs> James, are you negging her? <laughs> I I think that he might mm. actually be. Mm, maybe, like, maybe. I, I, I can't tell if it's a sarcastic remark or if he's actually taking his shot. Also, by the way, James Jackson absolutely was the person who was in charge. Like, he also is the person who said, what the fuck are you doing building a 210-room resort? Like, in right, this place. right. So okay. this dude, yeah. this dude, like, this letter was written in earnest. Mm-hmm. And then they just went ahead and did it anyway. That, so yeah, this, that makes sense. It probably just, uh... Divide, dividing conflicts, you know, dividing interests. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Mm. It's like, no, we, we get someone that actually believes that we're gonna we're gonna do right to defend us, and then we just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about it. Ah, it's fine. It's this. I think something I love about the mystery flesh pit is that it is a fascinating piece of world building, but it also is just written by a very bitter man, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Like I really appreciate like the bitterness that just oozes the the cynicism from the, like, everything yeah Ugh, it's my I love that <laughs> I really do it speaks no, to my I love soul. It. 
That's so good. What else? Oh, okay. You know what? Why mm -hmm. don't Why don't we take a look at one of uh, at some of the um, heavy machinery that they used? Ooh. Yeah. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Look at that. Actually, would you be willing to cover for me while I use the little owl's room? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay. Um, here I'm. Unowl me. I don't know. Oh, hold on. Unowl gonna... you. You know what okay. I can do? You know what I can do? <laughs> I can just kind of... Oh, wait. No, oh, other way. I have absorbed him. Help me. <laughs> Shut up in there. Help me. All right. Uh, take a look at this bad boy. Take a look at this. Yeah, no, I, I've seen plenty of these on the streets of Alaska plowing. Uh, let's see, in the early 1970s, prior to the involvement of either the Anodyne Corporation or the National Park Service, exploration of the Mystery Flesh Pit was a crude and arduous exercise undertaken by local agriculture and oil field workers, these young men, many of whom possess no formal training in caving, improvised a variety of methods to aid in these early missions of discovery. As an early attempt to mechanize the task of crawling through the viscera of the fleshscape. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> viscera of the fleshscape. <laughs> Took the form of field modified work trucks. Like the surviving GMC CK truck shown here, formerly on display within the upper visitor center, these jury rigged vehicles lack standardized designs and were highly experimental in nature. Though lacking the safety and articulation features common to later purpose-built machines, such as the Grumman introduced... Gum, gr Grumman produced internal anatomy vehicle! These simple trucks were relatively instrumental in early exploration efforts to survey the Permian Basin superorganism, with two or three surviving in service well into the 1980s. <laughs> Use code JUNIPER for a 30% discount on your next Manscaped purchase. Do you need to shave your viscera fleshscape? Then look no further. <laughs> Nordic, thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hi, Bow! Bow Bow! I love you. Not, not actually sponsored. Not. <laughs> this deep dive into the meat pit, sponsored by Hello Flesh. Fret, fret. <laughs> Wait, that was a, that was a Freudian slip. Sponsored by Hello Wait, Flesh. What happened? What Use happened? Coach. What happened? What happened? I, I, I Excuse said uh, we we have a sponsor here from Hello Flesh. I get God. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm okay. Welcome. I made it out. Welcome. I'm alive. How you doing? I. I don't want to speak of what I saw inside of there ever again. <laughs> I, in fact, I can't remember. I, it's okay. It's like there's a block. Uh, use like code Juni for three months th free of personal counseling. Yo, thank you for the tier three Makimu. Thank you so much. <laughs> who is this hot owl man? Hi, I'm Frederick Newton. I make down the rabbit hole and also hoot. Hi, Bao. That was lovely. Yeah, three months Aww. free counseling. <laughs> Wait, what's the really <laughs> shitty, like, web counsel thing that they use where they text? Like, like you know uh, what I'm talking about? Better help? Better help! Okay, I'm sorry. Do you, do you remember back on Twitter when people were posting their shitty better help, like, <laughs> text conversations? Yeah. Do you want to know something funny? Mm -hmm. I almost, like, way back, like, when I was only a couple years into making down the rabbit hole, I got an offer from better help. Oh, yeah. And I was like, mm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just going to, I almost took it, but I, it would have been my first sponsor. I backed away. And then like six months later, everyone was like, what the fuck is going on with better health? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I, I feel bad laughing because, you know, they were in there to get counseling, but some of the counselors were straight up just like, <laughs> um, be not, be not depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just really funny. Hmm. Anyways, uh, 
Uh, yes. I went over this nice truck here. Very beautiful, very handsome. Very handsome, it's, handsome it, it truck. Is, I, I love how it it really is just the body of a regular truck that's been really altered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think something that bothers me about all of the equipment that's used in the Mystery Flesh Pit is anytime there is an... Anytime there's something like cleats on boots or... Um, or those adjustments to the treads there. Yeah. They are there to better dig into it the It makes flesh. you uncomfortable, doesn't it? It makes me uncomfortable, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just every time. I, it's all I can think like, about. Like, even if the it. creature is completely fucking massive, I imagine that is sort of a, a like a sore spot on their body, you know? Right, yeah. It's like, I well, I, I think about the way that, for example, a tick will burrow into the skin. It's oh. like, that doesn't make me feel any better. I... <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, f I fear ticks. I really do. No, I do too. Mm -hmm. um, I... There are um, there are vaccines that you can get for a lot of the tick-borne diseases, and actually, like you can undergo treatment for uh, Lyme disease if you're paying attention. Like, in, in oh, my mom way. had Lyme disease. It's rough. Yeah. Um, but like, more dangerous is tick-borne encephalitis. But you can you can get um, uh, the vaccines for that. Actually, um, a vaccine has been available for twenty like over twenty years. Uh, that that has been regularly used in Europe, and it only recently got permitted in America. Oh, like as damn. in last year. Yeah, they've they've had a fucking vaccine for tick-borne encephalitis, and just you couldn't get it. <laughs> Was it? Uh, I I imagine you don't know the whole history about why that would be. Maybe it just couldn't pass FDA I, regulations I for some reason. I don't know that. I, I don't know why that in particular. Um, but I do know mm -hmm. that there was a Lyme disease vaccine, believe it or not. Um, except. It was introduced during the time that the media was pushing a lot of skepticism around vaccines. Oh, and so there, it, yeah. it wasn't, pro it, the Lyme disease vaccine ended up not being profitable enough and they shelved it. So there oh, was a, God. there was a vaccine for Lyme disease, but fear, uh, like fear mongering around all, the vaccines all because at the same of, time. All because it. of one fucking guy that wrote a fake paper to make people buy his vaccine instead of the mainstream vaccines. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there were fear. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, vaccines are causing AIDS. And it's like, I can't even begin with how not true that is. <laughs> One fucking guy. I've, ta I've talked shit about this dude on stream before. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> this dude basically God. sprung up a cult too. It's so weird. Wait, oh, really? A cult? Not like literally, but like... Oh, okay, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a sort of, sort of cult mentality around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the vaccine wasn't profitable as the most dystopian shit ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I pain. I was so angry when I learned there was a vaccine for Lyme disease. I was so mad. Yeah, I don't even remember like uh like wait what my mom ended up doing. I, I think she literally like went out of state uh, and did like experimental treatment. I mean, she's Ooh. fine now. That was this was like years okay. ago, but Okay. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Hmm. Okay, actually, you know what? I feel like we're backtracking talking about this a little bit, uh, but would you like to see some amniotic ballast hot tubs? Yes! <laughs> yes! I mean, we've, we've talked about, like, ri rich people doing ridiculous things. We've talked about, like, the the sex water. Yeah, yeah. And now he here is rich people pumping up sex water. Finally! Finally. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> the therapeutic benefits of amniotic ballast now available in your own home. C care to read the rest? If you're into the good life, you should know about GeoSpot. We believe every person deserves to plunge into the miraculous, rejuvenating, and stimulating effects of the amniotic blast. The GeoSpot is expertly engineered. <laughs> amniotic blast. Am, at, what was I saying? It's it's ballast. You oh. called it amniotic blast. I, like I it's did. a fucking Kingdom Hearts <laughs> attack. <laughs> the amni <laughs> 
The Geospa is expertly <laughs> engineered and is installed by professional technicians upon white glove delivery. It comes complete with a state-of-the-art electric heater, two-speed pulp. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Amniotic blast. I'm going to explode <laughs> you into babies. <laughs> That's... Huh. <laughs> and six adjustable hydro jet nozzles to tickle your fancy whatever or whoever that may be. Expertly engineered, fully assembled and pre-tested. Just add a few very appreciative friends. Discover all the features that make the Geospa luxurious by nature and superior by design. Write for a free lavishly illustrated catalog or call toll free 800 <laughs> Zero one six eight. <laughs> Be rich and don't do weird sex stuff. Challenge. This Impossible. is this. This is the orgy tub. It Why? Is. What the fuck? Yeah, no. This is the fuck tub. A hundred percent. Very appreciative friends. God. From the moment the properties of amniotic ballast were realized, there was a rush to export the experience of bathing in the natural thermal springs of the Mystery Flesh Pit Natural Park into the home. The difficulties in such a proposition rested within the additional property of ballast to begin losing some of its potency with removal from the venterial environment. While of course possible through a combined strategy of pressurization, heating, concentration, and chemical stabilization, such efforts were never cheap or easily portable. As a result, few, uh, few but the relatively wealthy ever enjoyed the full benefits of ballast bathing outside of the mystery flesh pit, which ended up driving more and more visitors to the park as the health and recreational value of ballast became more widespread. Hey, I'd like to point out something really quick. And yes. maybe this is me overthinking a little, as I as I am often prone to do. But in the tub here, there's an well, first of all, like, you know, there's an even even gender ratio here. Mm -hmm. Also, both of the women are looking at the guy on the right. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy on the left is looking at her, but she's looking at him. <gasps> There's drama here. <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? Like, it's just some random dude that climbed the fence and crawled in. <laughs> Cucking in progress. Oh, no. Well, it looks very... Man, I, that's that's one of the other reasons I want my own place one of these days, is a hot tub. That would be so hot, nice. Hot, hot tubs are nice. Yeah, gosh, really. not like an orgy yeah. tub, but just like a hot tub. Yes, it's... I... No, I I grew up... My, my family, I feel like, had, uh, like, the poor versions of rich people things. Mm. Like, we had a hot tub, but it was tiny. Oh, okay. Right, like, um, and, but there were so many good memories made from it. I, I will never like so many memories of it. Mm. It's, it's good. It's, it's a fantastic place to just like sit and hang out. Man, I just, I, I just need to de-stress every once in a while, you know? Nice hot tub. Oh, yeah, man. some amniotic fluid. Oh, uh, whenever <laughs> I kind of like, I. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, should you should you avoid hotel hot tubs? Because there's you know there's been like kids in there like pissing or whatever. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> anytime I would go to a hotel, I would try to get get to the hot tub. But now now I'm too afraid. I, I don't want like like what is the the one super super rare amoeba that lives in like uh, public pools that has like a 100% fatality rate? Oh god. Yeah! You, you know, let me see if Wait, I can find the, it. Yes. Hold on, here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think there was a, a, a Kurt, oh god, I don't know German. Kurt, Kurtz, Kurtz video about it? Uh, Kurtzgesagt. Thank you. I'm not gonna even dare to repeat that, but yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah, they made a video about the amoeba. Yeah, it's. It's, um, what was it, Klutzkazak, or was it, um, Tom Scott? Oh, shit. Uh, I don't know. It was one I think of it was those Tom two. Scott. Tom one Scott. Of those. I know Tom Scott made a video about it. That pronunciation was perfect. I, I'm learning German. <laughs> like, cool. 
Tom Scott. You know what? Maybe I'll look into Tom Scott as well. I just, you know, I, I like I like to expand my brain. It's pushing so hard against the inside of my skull, it's gonna rupture any day now. <laughs> no, that's Scott. great. And then it'll spill over and everyone can partake of your de delicious brain juices. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, don't tell my chat that. Oh no. <laughs> They want the goop. The go oh. <laughs> All right. I oh man oh there's mm -hmm. some more. Okay, you know what? What is this? Wait a minute. Wait, I don't think I've ever seen this one. Like goop. What? Art? No, not the goop. Mm -hmm. This this part of the mystery flesh pit. What? Oh, I know it's not the goop. My brain just um short circuited. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> bring bring no worky. <laughs> bring no worky. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I'm not going. <laughs> Here, I linked it to you. The well of the abhumans. Ooh, appear into the past. The well of the abhumans is the name given to a unique field duct, fluid duct that was discovered in the early 1980s by workers installing telecom lines within the mystery flesh pit. The relatively small tube was notable in that it was comprised of tissue types previously unencountered, serving a role in a then unknown anatomical system within the pit. Once the duct was open and the upper duct was scaled, it was found to be saturated with formaldehyde. After a few hours of slow descent, a bladder-like organ was encountered by an explorer which was filled with a dense sponge-like tissue. Additionally, there oh, were- hey, it's my brain. <laughs> dense sponge-like tissue, huh? That's- Oh yeah. That's no, kind of unflattering. <laughs> I- I- I know what I am. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, there were discovered the bodies of three unidentified mammals in a severe state of decay, but otherwise preserved by the formaldehyde. Though the proportions and musculature of the bodies initially led investigators to believe they were human remains, additional investigation revealed musculoskeletal features wholly different from any known hominid. Later, radiological dating of the bone samples from the bodies indicated a startling disparity between the three corpses. One was dated to the 10th century AD, one was dated to over 35,000 years BC, and with the final specimen having bones entirely consisting of a dense plastic polymer. Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck? Someone fucking threw their transformer down into the well. What in the goddamn... <laughs> yeah. Uh. Future? Yeah. Chat El saying yeah. maybe future people, future person. Right, like aliens. Why? A why aliens was it? Can't. Why there though? Right, like it's well, they're they're preserved because of the formaldehyde. But yeah, yeah. What? Like, where could it could have come? And where where, where could it have come from? Why formaldehyde? Yeah, what's the formaldehyde doing there? Uh, let's see. Hold on. It was found to be saturated with formaldehyde. It, uh, a bladder-like organ was encountered by an explorer. Uh, yeah. Like, the formaldehyde was already there. Um, and it's like, why? Yeah, they're saying, like, ancient aliens. It's... that. I think that's the implication. Yeah, I was, chat, I was gonna say microplastics. <laughs> I hope I eat so many microplastics that they turn into a little skeleton inside my tummy. <laughs> if I if I eat enough pieces, uh, like you know, I if I eat enough like pieces of Beyblade, maybe I'll have a top inside of me and I will be able to <gasps> stay upright no matter what. You'll be able to zoom, to do yeah. like a spin zoom. Oh my god, I'm gonna be like the next Marvel superhero. <laughs> You're gonna have to eat so many Beyblades! What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, I, I sh the best time to- what was it? The best time to have started eating Beyblades was yesterday. The second best time is today. Dude, this is fucked up. I don't want to think about this. The mystery flesh pit was already so big and expansive. I don't also- I don't want to also think about the possibility of, like, uh, like, like, I don't know, time travel, I guess? But maybe not time travel, maybe just existing in all time, you know? 
You know, I think that's a very good point, which is why we should look at even more methods that were used to pull stuff out. Yeah, you you know what will make yeah. you feel better? Material possessions pulled from the the mystery flesh pit oh, itself. Oh no. Yes. Oh no. Oh wait, hold on. Okay. Uh, Venterial mining crew enlarges and clears fluid from an existing duct in preparation to move in larger extraction equipment. And this work requires considerable skill and psychological resistance to claustrophobia. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. If, if like, if, like, I'm sitting in a car and I don't have enough space to move my legs, I will gain, like, superhuman strength and destroy the car with my own bare hands. <laughs> like, like, I am so claustrophobic. <laughs> no, I... I, I hate it. Even the the concept of like caving just terrifies me. Ugh, I, I can't I yeah, can't do yeah, it. Yeah, Even yeah, just yeah. watching videos about people caving terrifies me. I I don't I, fuck with that. I really don't. I, I I'm I'm not ready. I'm I'm just never ever ready for it. I I hate that hmm. being eaten whole was a part of like so many animations like movies growing up and kids <laughs> shows i remember so many of them so vividly and because it horrified me every time i will never forget the episode of power rangers where there's like an enemy who's a beetle who has a super strong carapace and one of the characters purposefully gets eaten by it in order to kill it from the inside and there was a shot of him like crawling around in his stomach and i fucking had nightmares <laughs> i just oh Aww, god traumatized the worst yeah it's why why did it keep happening it happened with such regularity i i don't, I don't I, all i remember was the magic school bus episode I hated those too. <laughs> I I could not stand those. Like I I didn't have cable or satellite, so I watched lots of public broadcast. Uh, yeah, public broadcast PBS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, me too. I, yeah, yeah, you got the good stuff. Yeah, um, Nova Nova is my biggest inspiration for Down the Rabbit Hole. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I loved Nova growing up, but um, the Magic School Bus loved it right up until they like started going into the human body over and over. And it's just like, <laughs> why? Stop. Why do they why? have to keep why? doing stop. it? No! no! Please, no, stop. Why? <laughs> always. Fucking weird, man. Weird. I, I can't. I, I feel like that's just one time. of the tropes that just exists in cartoons for some reason. Like if you make a make a cartoon, there has to be a shrink and enter a person episode. It's right. so cursed. Why? Right. There's like turn everyone into a baby. Um, like there there was always one of those. Um, get eaten or like go into the body of something else. Like, mm -hmm. look to me, Evil Bowser's double. Inside Story mm -hmm. is a horror game. <laughs> Well, like Mar what was it like Mario and Luigi's? Like, no, it's Bowser's Inside Story, right? That's what it's called. I don't know. I'm not. Interface I'm not really he like a huge, huge Nintendo gamer. I knit neither. neither hmm. am I. I grew up with it, but the gender eh. bend episode, right? Right? Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what if man was woman? <laughs> Whoa! What's Whoa! a woman? <laughs> what? It's like wow everything changes nothing like, changed <laughs> right it's like they, they always have to come up with like super contrived things oh like, no oh, why it matters it, clothes <laughs> fit different now i don't know shrugs <laughs> right it's it's like it's like sh it, everyone just wanted to do their own version of the metamorphosis by franz kafka and just except woman mm -hmm. it's like it's not cool if they're turned into a cockroach what if they were instead? What, what made... if they were something worse? A woman. A woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Body swap episodes. Yeah. God. That that's often how it was done. It's like, oh, the boy and the girl. They swapped in the bodies, and the boy is like, it's, it's technically sexually assaulting the the, the character. Eh. They always feel themselves up, and it's like, this is not okay. <laughs> This is weird, right? man. Keep like, it. That's... Just keep those thoughts to yourself. 
<laughs> right. D don't don't do that. <laughs> hey, Fred. Uh, I have a super weird update. Okay. I'm actually tell running me. out of battery on my uh, my phone that I use What's for that? tracking. Oh, mm -hmm. oh god. I have I, time. I, I have time. The same thing. Okay. 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 But it's, it's do we want to get to the juicy stuff? Yes. I. You know what? There, there was one other thing that I wanted to share with you uh, before we get to our capstone. Our, uh, it's specifically a an account from someone who worked inside of the mystery flesh pit gathering things. Mm. Here we go. And this is something that I feel like is not looked at enough from the mystery flesh pit. Cool. Um, I would be happy to read it if you would like. Uh, if you would um, like to read it, go crazy. Okay. Dear, uh, so this is experiences of a flesh pit mine worker. Dear Brandon, and feel free to interrupt me at any moment, mm, by the mm. way. Dear Brandon, mm, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Dear Brandon. I'm writing you back about your career, uh, career report Dear project Brand for school. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope you find my response satisfactory. It's my experience, and it's all true. I was 17 when I signed on with the company to work a full tour. The money they promised for nine months of work was more than I could have made in a lifetime in any other career. I was a shit-kicking dropout from Hobbs. Most people already know that the real money is made in pumping up ballast, but they have it automated to the point where you only need someone to babysit the equipment. What a lot of people don't know is that there are a bundle of other minerals, gels, gases, and oozes that are worth more than their weight in gold for their myriad industrial applications. The big three are blue, blue tissue, pearls, corpusite, and black bone, oscurolite. Oscurolite, there we go. Our rig was outfitted to hunt for pearls, great crystalline spheres that were 2 to 15 feet wide, hard as diamond, smooth Ooh. and clear as glass, with an otherworldly iridescent shimmer. They are embedded in different ways deep down in the pit, and to get to them you have to cut, trudge, push, and crawl through miles and miles of muscle and guts and cartilage and bone that are fighting you the whole way. That's where we make our paychecks. A full mining crew is 18 men, and yes, it pretty much always is men, which includes two to three mining engineers, a medic, two mechanics, a venterial tech, two company men to oversee everything, and 10 hired hands like me. You sign up for nine months at a time, split up into three month stints with two week breaks in between. Down in the flesh, your home and lifeline during those dark months is a mining rig, a huge machine almost as big as a neighborhood street, bristling with tools and racks and sensors and floodlights. Actually, I think... Hmm. Yeah, here we go. I have one for you to look at while I talk about it. Ooh. Here. That link should work. There yeah. we go. The ins... Okay. The insides are tight and cramped. Our crew medic had been a submariner for eight years and had told us that the sub he served on was more spacious. Still, compared to being outside the rig, out in the raw pit, the cramped bunks felt like luxury. Ideally, the rig cuts as it goes, leaving a burnt, cauterized path through the meat while also crushing and processing any minerals it runs through. In the real world, the pit isn't uniform, and you end up running into all kinds of obstacles requiring interventional solutions, or the brass up top decide that they don't want you just cutting through certain parts of the anatomy. So you suit up and get out ahead of the rig to poke and prod and pry at a walking pace eight hours a day for weeks at a time. Rigs have big hydraulic arms that reach forward and push, lift and splay open organs or muscle bundles before us roustabouts would go in and suck up or hose out any blood, cut tendons, cauterized tissue, rinse and repeat. Because the methods for finding things like pearls are based on shaky science at best, a lot of time was spent probing around until you found pay dirt. When you'd find a decently sized cluster, we'd set up camp and we would go about breaking them down. 
The rigs have a huge mining laser they can use to free up any gigantic pearls or black bone clusters, but most of the time you're out there with big tools to break them free. Is this going on too long, by the way? Let oh, me know. Oh, okay. oh, it's good. I was just zoning out. I mean, okay. not like zoning okay, no, out. I was listening. You're, you are good. That's fine. If, if chat's fine with it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, enjoy, I do this for a living. I'm, I'm, I am happy. My position had been vacated the year before because the hand got crushed under a tissue catchment Oof. bucket. Think giant steel walled tray weighing half a ton used to catch slop and other meat before it falls on your working area. And he bled out because it took hours for an ambulance to get out to the location. In the nine months I worked that rig, I had a few very close calls to getting crushed. What keeps you from being crushed by the weight of all the body above you is a mess of cabling and fold-out frames connected to a 50,000-pound counterweight. After an eight-hour shift of scope pulling, meaning removing all the length of an endoscope pipe from probe line, I got a bit careless and was hitching my tongs to the pipe while it was still in motion. The idea being that it shaved a few seconds per disconnection, and it added up over a long shift. What I forgot is that near the, near the head of the endoscope, the pipe diameter changed by two inches. The rig operator was pulling full speed when the larger pipe came back, and my tongs grabbed the pipe and suddenly launched backwards. I held on to the tongs, and it jerked me a couple feet back, and I let go. The heavy tong cable went taut, and the operator stomped on the brakes at the same time, and the whole thing was jerked to a sudden halt. The huge tackle block was clanging around the whole cavity like a giant ringer in a bell, and buckled one of the support frames. Everybody jumped clear, and we ducked and braced with whatever we could until the rig stopped shaking. It was probably fortunate that we were near the end of the pole, so there was only, there was only around three tons of backlash when it happened. Most of my men, most of the men, sorry, I was taking a sippy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> most of the men I worked with had some sort of permanent injury, lost fingers, blown shoulders or knees, etc. The more experience, the more injuries. Even in our suits connected to refrigerated air, it was more than 100 degrees and full saturation humidity. It's pitch black everywhere down there, so you rely on your helmet lights, work lights, and the rig lights to be able to see and they all give everything a sickly shine. Working down there isn't at all like working in a cave or a mine. Everything is wet, slippery, disgusting, and miserable. Nothing is flat or walkable, and you have to fight a feeling of raw animalistic terror every moment you're out in it. Men weren't meant to be down there in the innards of a monster, but I figure that's why the company pays people what they do. I finished up my contract without injury, and for that I consider myself extremely lucky. I took the money and got an education. Most people don't consider it exciting work, but you'll never find a more satisfied accountant. I never went back there, especially after the big accident they had in 07. There are a lot of stupid kids that still do that kind of work. You sound like a smart kid. Stay the hell away from it. That's my career advice for you. Let me know if you need anything else for your school report. Thanks, Andre Martinez. Ah, uh, of course he's a Martinez. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's fucked. Habla Espanol. <laughs> Habla Espanol. <laughs> it's fucked. Uh, <sighs> a school <laughs> report. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. I need to know what happened in 2007. We are Junie, close. Is it time? Is it time? I believe it might be time. <gasps> you, love... you have been so accommodating. We've gone over mm -hmm. time. Yeah, I've... it's it's no biggie at all. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me on, and thank you, chat, for being so welcome. You have a really sweet chat. Yo, they're people, so. I love my chat. Really they're nice. so good. <laughs> and if your chat isn't here, you're also good. No, my my chat is really good. Like the the all coming is lovely. I I've I've been seeing names that I recognize all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, Ika Pika actually uh, was so excited for us uh, doing the stream that um, they made a piece of art <gasps> about it already. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm excited they were working. They, they showed a work in progress, and it's like, that's awesome. I 
Okay, you guys, we've been dancing around it is the whole this time, the bite but I think of it's time. 07? This is the hmm? incident that closed the mystery flesh pit permanently. Everything. Yes, here we go. Like, companies went bankrupt, they just shut the whole thing down. Mm hmm. Shut her down. Yeah. And this is going to take a minute to get through. Yeah. Just by the way. Um, but it is worth it. Mm hmm. Um, if you'd like, we could trade off. Yeah, I I'd be down to pick up uh, off and on, you know? Mm hmm. Just pass the baton. Okay. Um, would would you like to will open this? Yeah, this is the text version. Um, th there's like a PDF version, but this is just the text, and it has all of the relevant uh, diagrams. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, final incident investigation report prepared in cooperation with the U.S. Department of the Interior, the National Park Service, and the U.S. Geological Survey, U.S. Commission on Geobiological Resources and Public Safety, U.S. Geological Survey, U.S. Department of the Interior, National Park Service. The U.S. Commission on Geobiological Resources and Public Safety, CGR, is an independent federal agency whose mission is to ensure the safety of workers, the public, and the environment by investigating and preventing accidents relating to the Permian-based superorganism. The CGR is a scientific, investigative organization. It is not an enforcement or regulatory body. Established by the Special Resources Development Act of 1980, the CGR is responsible for determining the roots and contributing causes of accidents, issuing safety recommendations, studying geobiological safety issues, and evaluating the effectiveness of other government agencies and private expertise involved with the Permian-based superorganism. No part of the conclusions, findings, or recommendations of the CGR relating to any accident may be admitted as evidence or used in any action or suit for damages. The CGR... Yeah, the, the, mm. the, the, yeah this is just kind of a yeah, disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a disclaimer. It's, yeah. But, you know, some context. The CGR makes public yeah. its actions and decisions through investigative reports, summary reports, safety bulletins, safety recommendations, yada yada, legal jargon. We're not liable. We're li <laughs> we're, we, 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 didn't do, we didn't do anything. You can't use our reports against us. <laughs> I'm just a little goblin. Well, we're just a little committee. <laughs> just a little committee, please. Please don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm not mm. even All right, I I'll begin I'll yet. begin with 1.0 and you can yes. take 2. Point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll bounce back mm -hmm. and forth. At 9:41 p.m. CST on July 4th, 2007, the Permian Basin Superorganism Natural Preserve, no colloquially as the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, experienced a <laughs> catastrophic disaster which resulted in over 750 fatalities and over 1,800 major injuries. In the weeks following the incident, approximately 18,000 individuals from the surrounding communities sought medical and psychological treatment for ailments including breathing problems, chest pains, shortness of breath, nausea, birth defects, hallucinations, depression, anxiety, internal bleeding, sore throat, and headaches as a direct result of contact with gastric, eje gastric ejecta which had been introduced to the atmosphere. Vomit. Yeah, to the atmosphere, yeah. like a volcano. Mm -hmm. So, aerosolized vomit. Mm -hmm. Investigators have concluded that this disaster was chiefly characterized by a premature geobiological consumption event caused by the catastrophic failure of critical park infrastructure to constrain and limit the gastric, motor, and neurological actions of the Permian Basin superorganism. Investigators have concluded that the failure of these critical safety measures are the direct result of negligent practices by the primary site operations contractor, Anodyne Deep Earth Mining, a subsidiary of Anodyne Inc. The U.S. Commission on Geobiological Resources and Public Safety released its first report on the Permian Basin Superorganism Disaster in August 2007, the interim report which highlighted technical findings and safety system deficiencies. The report issued recommendations to Anodyne Inc., the city of Gumption, Texas, the state of Texas, the U.S. Department of the Interior, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the U.S. Food and Drug Administrations, and the U.S. Department of Energy. As of April 2008, these groups have made progress in implementing the recommendations as to improve the regulatory requirements for geobiological resource extraction. Geobiological resource containment and general public safety as it relates to the Permian Basin superorganism. Now we get. To, I, I like the these backgrounds. They're they're just so frank. Anodyne background. 
Anodyne was originally founded as the Anchor Mineral Company in 1923. In 1958, the Anchor Mineral Company merged with Dynamic Equipment, LLC, to form a new company known as Anodyne Deep Earth Mining, later changed to Anodyne. Headquartered in, Arling in Arlington, Texas, I'll tell you what, and prior to its <laughs> 2008 restructuring, Anodyne Corporation was the 23rd largest American company by revenue. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. I found a big flesh pit. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, that's just a vagina. No, Dad. No, really. <laughs> cursed. <laughs> Fucking cursed. Sorry. <laughs> I'm. I'm... <laughs> God, pro proceed. <laughs> Globally, Anodyne employed over twenty-eight thousand people. It operated seven major research, development, and production facilities around the world, six of which were in the United States. Anodyne filed for bankruptcy in late 2008, but ended its bankruptcy in February of 2009, pursuant to a court-approved plan of reorganization. A new board of directors changed the name of Anodyne to the Permian Basin Recovery and Superorganism Containment Corporation and emphasized reorganizing and liquidating certain operations and assets of the pre-bankruptcy Anodyne. So, you guys, mm -hmm. the company that actually caused this incident, they're still in charge. Uh oh I actually, I really that like that this never... is just a recap of, like, all the important details, you know? Yeah. No, it so, is. Like, th this is good background. Mm. The Permian Basin Superorganism, also known as the Mystery Flesh Pit, is a subterranean organism unique to modern biology, being the sole occupant of the phylum Iman... <laughs> I'm not saying that. The organism was discovered by a pilot <laughs> well drooling... <laughs> Pilot, pilot well, well drill yeah. <laughs> drilling crew in 1973. Later I efforts, did the same thing. yeah, were made to expose more of the organism through drilling and surface mining explosives. The superorganism is chiefly characterized by its immense size, which is still a matter of geobiological debate. Survey suggests that the organism may span many hundreds of miles beneath the Permian Basin horizontally with scientists speculating that the organism may extend vertically into the upper mantle of the Earth's interior. The complete anatomical layout and internal organization of the organism is unknown. Tissue samples suggest that the organism contains gastrointestinal, vascular, respiratory, mus musculoskeletal, nervous, limbic, and I'm sorry, systems with remarkably similar similarity to mammal life while also containing a variety of systems which have no direct analog and are not fully understood. The feeding cycle of the organism is poorly understood and believed to occur in a complex and long-term schedule of dormancy and feeding activity. It has been hypothesized that the superorganism derives caloric energy from subterranean hydrocarbon deposits, though the organism has been observed to digest and absorb organic matter. The depth at which the organism extends into the surrounding rock strata indicates that the organism is several hundred thousand years old. It is unknown what the natural lifespan of the species is, or if the Permian Basin superorganism represents a mature or developing example of the species. <sighs> Juniper. Yeah? I have an idea. What? I would like to read the incident timeline yeah? in a particular way. Oh, yeah? Okay. Would you like to pass off each incident? Yeah, sure. I think we could create a nice sense of immediacy that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> 1029. Oh, yeah. Start of relevant timeline. 10.29 a.m. Unseasonably high rains force park administrators to cancel a July 4th concert and fireworks display scheduled to take place on the surface park grounds. Many visitors who had already purchased tickets to the event become upset, and a decision is made to extend the park hours until midnight for those who had purchased event tickets. 8 p.m. Normal closing time for the National Park. A typical shift change of reduced night staff in the control room takes place. 9.16 p.m. 
Harvesting crews working in the western extremities of the organism set a new extraction record to meet a quota for bonuses in time for the holiday weekend. 9.30 p.m. Control room operators initiate a routine system self-test and discover a relay fault error resulting from increased electrical demand for mining equipment and tourist infrastructure. A control room operator logs the fault and notifies an on-duty engineer. 9.41 p.m. Water drainage from surface rain into the entry orifice begins to collect in the sand gullet. Drainage pumps are automatically activated by a sensor system, but fail to initialize due to the relay fault. An emergency backup pump running on a separate emergency circuit is automatically activated. 9.42 p.m. A critical alarm in the control room alerts operators that the emergency water pump has seized and is inoperative. Under lubrication of the pump's impeller bushings result in corrosion due to the moist interior of the flesh pit environment. 9.48 p.m. Technicians arrive at the primary pump station to discover the sand gullet almost completely submerged. Water begins to pour over the dorsal respiratory ridge and into bronchial bulbules. Control room operators divert power to hydraulic stent rams to brace for expected choke response. 9.51 p.m. Technicians... That's a typo, sorry. That is Technicians a typo. repair the relay fault <laughs> as control staff reset the park's electrical grid. The grid is offline for 45 seconds. The automatic PA system does not notify guests as the system is scheduled to automatically shut down at the normal 8 p.m. closing time. The temporary lapse of lighting causes many guests to become panicked and return to the main gantry lift at the lower visitor center. 9.52 p.m. A choking action from the organism begins 31 seconds into the electrical reset. The main dorsal trunk violently flexes. Lack of power to hydraulic ar arming rams causes irreparable damage to several sections of internal infrastructure. 9.53 p.m. As the electrical system finishes the reboot cycle, the dynamic hydraulic act actuators <laughs> supporting the lower visitor center overcorrect for stability, not accounting for the shift in the wall lining of the nexial cavity in which the visitor center facility is anchored. Two of the six structural supports are torn from their foundations, which causes the facility to list 20 degrees off vertical. The base joint of the vertical entry gantry is bent beyond its design limit angle. 9.54 p.m. The master alarm is tripped automatically. Surface facilities are notified as response teams are given the order to mobilize. 9.56, park rangers are dispatched to rescue groups of visitors trapped in partially collapsed tunnels and trails. 10.03 p.m., continued movement of the organism combined with rainwater causes one of the upper entry gantry supports to slip. An outbound elevator conducts an emergency stop, stranding over two dozen visitors. 10.05, tremors registered as far away as the DFW Metroplex. 10.06 p.m. Soil liquefaction destabilizes surface facilities in and around the organism. Dilation anchors begin retracting to keep the entry orifice open. 10.12. A master failsafe is activated by the automated park management systems. 20,000 liters of aceto... <laughs> Aconitine. Aconitine, cool. A compound are injected into the superorganism via a distributed network of relay stations located throughout its known internal anatomy. Um, I actually looked this up a while mm. ago. Aconitine is a paralyzant. Ah, I see. So basically, they're trying to paralyze it to get it to stop moving. Mm -hmm. 20,000 liters of it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Crimes against nature. <laughs> <laughs> or it's or, um, it's or is it a tranquilizer, not a um, not a paralyzant? Yeah, same. I mean, not really the same thing, the same thing. <laughs> the, the goal, at least, is mm -hmm. the same. They're trying to get it to soft spasming. 10, 12 p.m. Tem tremors and convulsions intensify as the entry gantry connection to the lower visitor center detaches completely. The lower visitor center begins to collapse downward into the nexial cavity. 10, 12 p.m. Peristaltic muscle action of the nexial cavity begins to exert substantial pressure on the outer structure of the lower visitor center facility. 
10.15 p.m., the prime labioid junction just west of the septum falls... Yeah, labioid. Okay, I'm not just having a Freudian slip. The prime <laughs> labioid junction just west of the septum falls geobiological feature flexes into an open position, releasing a torrent of lactogastric chyma into the dorsal trunk. It is likely that this was a reaction to the aconitine injection. Which, for those who don't remember, is vomit, essentially. Yes. Half digested. Yep. Uh, 10, 16 p.m., uh, peristaltic phasms force the caustic chyma slurry through the nexial cavity and up through the lower and upper moisture crops towards the surface orifice. 10, 16 p.m., Many guests attempting to flee the stalled elevator near the entry orifice attempt climbing out the upper moisture crop, but are ultimately unsuccessful due to the torrential rains causing the surfaces to become very slippery. Many end up falling back into the maw. 1017. The chyma slurry erupts from the surface orifice in a geyser several hundred meters in height. Large pieces of undigested organic matter crush several vehicles and damage windows. 10.19 p.m. Following the several-minute-long ejecta event, a deep and incredibly loud roar erupts from the entry orifice as ground tremors intensify further. Large extremities begin surfacing through bedrock and soil approximately 30 to 120 kilometers from the entry orifice. 10.25 p.m. The acrid smell of the gastric ejecta can be detected as far as Odessa, Texas. 10.26 p.m. Two Park Service vehicles and a tour vehicle containing Park Service employees and several guests attempt to ascend through the entry orifice tube. 10.27. Peristaltic action crushes one of the tour vehicles and sucks the other two vehicles back into the nexial cavity and down into a digestive organ. These vehicles are presumed destroyed. 10.58 p.m., so about half an hour later. The Pentagon is given authorization from the White House to use nuclear force if necessary to prevent the organism from entering an active and or ab ambulatory state. 10.02 p.m. The on-site operations director within the lower visitor center control room initiates a final fail-safe measure in the form of the contingency measure. Yeah, this is, uh, this is some SCP-style redacted shit going on. Mm -hmm. 10.02 p.m. Master event log records successful spin-up of the contingency measure. 10.05 p.m. Lower visitor center structural integrity is critically compromised, resulting in total collapse. 10.05 p.m. Data connection with lower visitor center is severed. 10.13 p.m. Spasms and or motor- Or Susie, 11. Oh, I, I oh, yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah, 11. You, bro, you, you got there me was... too. <laughs> I was like 10.13. 11, 13 p.m. Spasms and motor action of the superorganism begins to noticeably subside. Response teams begin to descend into the surface orifice to attempt to rescue operations. 11.19 p.m. Response team encounters visitor group which had attempted escape from stalled elevator. Most are dead. The remainder are mortally wounded and partially digested due to caustic gastric ejecta. 11.42 p.m. Radio contact established with a ranger vehicle trapped within Oyster's Shame. Due to ventricle closure, no feasible rescue strategy can be developed before complete mastication occurs. Mastication means chewing. Yum! <laughs> <laughs> For those in chat who might not know. <clears throat> 11.56 p.m. Response team confirms that the contingency measure and associated facility are still intact and operating. 11.58 p.m. Texas government governor Rick Perry formally declares a state of emergency for Gumption County. 12.22 a.m. Response teams route data and power umbilical to new base camp in contingency measure facility. 12.35 a.m. Three interpit life forms are identified as having been ejected onto the surface. Fifteen visitors are injured and seven are hunted by interpit life forms during panicked evacuation of surface resort. Them grabby hands are coming for you. Yeah, they got the fingies. <laughs> they gonna get ya. <laughs> 12.41 a.m. Park staff managed to kill the three large life forms. 
1.02 a.m. National Guard helicopters begin delivering supplies and personnel to aid in site containment. 1.58 a.m. Field hospi hospital is constructed to care for wounded visitors and staff. 2.37 a.m. Initial damage surveys report catastrophic destruction of internal park infrastructure. Pit geobiology has dramatically changed in hazard level. 3 o'clock a.m. Emergency teleconference of Anodyne Executive Leadership. National Parks Director and State Secretary of the Interior are present. 3.12 a.m. Executive decision is made to initiate FEMA response and assemble a task force for containing super, super organism. 4 o'clock a.m. Media helicopters and vehicles begin to report on the scope of disaster. 4.39 a.m. Base camp technicians begin to spin down contingency measure. Large fractures due to inertial stress have appeared on mineral components. Engineers advise against reinitializing contingency measure until material components can be replaced or repaired. 6.08 a.m. Ground personnel begin assembling, assembling a pump system to inject industrial sedatives into the superorganism. Transport trucks containing industrial sedative arrive. 9.45 a.m. Emergency teleconference of anodyne shareholders. <laughs> so important. Hmm. We are supposed to help our people, starting with our stockholders, Bob. We're supposed <laughs> to help them out, huh? <laughs> No, think about the shareholders. No, no, no. <laughs> they hit the fucking shareholders. <laughs> 1120 AM. Several injured visitors inexplicably leave field hospital and begin walking towards open pit orifice. Approximately 38 individuals are able to crawl back into the orifice over the course of eight hours. None are recovered. <sighs> 3.51 p.m. Radio transmission from trapped ranger vehicle ceases. Many speculate that the other small groups of visitors and staff are still trapped. End of relevant timeline. They went back. They heard the call, I guess, the call of the void. That's, um, I, I remember <clears throat> there was discussion of this in another Q&A. Mm -hmm. um, one of the possibilities is that these people injured on the outside had loved ones on the inside. Oh, maybe. Oh, and they yeah. They were trying to go in for them. That makes sense. Final investigation report. The following final investigation report addresses additional investigation findings not covered in the previous report, including analysis of 1. The Anodyne Organization, Emergency Response and Safety Culture 2. Industry Disaster Response Standards 3. Structural Integrity Standards and 4. Effective Performance of Mystic Contingency Measures Hold on. <laughs> Should I? Hey, chat. Opinions. My phone just died. Should I leave the static image like this, pensively staring off into the, uh, I guess, ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you look like you're about to recite a Shakespearean mm. sonnet. <laughs> All right. Uh... This report highlights the following technical findings. Uh, the electrical distribution scheme for the interior operations of the Permian Basin Superorganism Nature Preserve was modeled on a typical supply slash load grid layout often found in mines with power provided by a gas-fired plant located within the surface support compound. Unlike typical mining power distribution networks, a lower load was split with the facilities involved in the tourism and natural preservation operations within the organism. This split demand yielded a load fluctuating from, uh, I don't know what that measurement is, actually. 33k something? Uh, Whatever. Uh, kilovolts? Kilovolts? Okay, maybe. To 60 kilovolts, depending on a range of factors from resource extraction output, visitor th throughput, and hydrostatic and barometric fluctuations within the organism, and the ambient blood pressure from the organism. This unorthodox load distribution scheme required careful demand oversight that was subject to failure if operated outside of design load specifications, such a failure occurred on July 4th, 2007, where operators increased electrical demand beyond design load specifications. 
by both extending resource extraction operations while simultaneously increasing visitor throughput loads on trail infrastructures. Uh, hold on, I, I think I have a solution. Oh, uh, here, hold on uh, oh. to 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 our to the stream problem. If I, 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 I just. Ooh, what? Ooh, nothing to see yeah here. yeah no, just just cover it here. up <laughs> no, nothing to see here no no we're good we're fine basically <laughs> what they're trying to say here chat if you can't if you don't have any reading comprehension is is that they used too much power when they weren't supposed to yes <laughs> because there were visitors trying to get back into the park okay. because of like a concert that got canceled it's like i want my money's worth yeah pretty much yeah I feel I that feels like a very Texan thing, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Let's see. Hydrochloric cor <laughs> hydrochloric corrosion is common in geobiological resource extraction, where naturally occurring hydrochloric compounds react with steel equipment. Process variables that affect corrosion rates include the total hydrochloric content of the enzyme secretions, flow conditions, application of Tums industrial organic corrosion inhibitor salve, and the- oh my fucking god, did, did they actually use Tums? Uh, I- I think- huh? I think I forgot about- I think I forgot about this huh? thing. They, they use industrial like, grade Tums? <laughs> They literally are like Tom. I, I forgot about this. I think that Tom that actually slaps. literally stepped in to make a salve to prevent like, uh, and they made an antacid. They made an antacid for it. <laughs> I wonder what flavor it was. <laughs> it's a Tom's festival. That's the <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. Virtually all geobiological operations equipment is subject to this type of corrosion and requires routine inspections and preventative maintenance to ensure that metallic and non-metallic corrosion-prone surfaces are operating at design strength. The investigation has concluded that the corrosion found within the primary impeller bushings within the emergency drainage pumps was caused by hydrochloric corrosion due to poor maintenance. Ya fucked it. Yeah, yes, you're bad. You're bad and dumb. Never do this again, dummy dumb. <laughs> do I do we do we have to read is there anything like important in this one? Uh yeah, so if we go mm -hmm. down, we basically see like yeah, they fucked it up. There are some interesting diagrams, like we can see what happened to the lower visitor center. Oh yeah, check that out, chat. It it got crushed. Just totally crushed. Just slorped up. Yeah. All those supports broke. So, like, mm. the, we also can see the diagram of the contingency measure. Basically, they, like, they they have a weird stone. It's, they, they, they charged up some J.O. crystals and then, like, got those spinning really fast. Yeah, that's the one part about this that kind of evades me. I, th I think it's, like, more cosmic and like difficult to understand but that was what right. they used to calm it down uh right it's, it, it's maybe it's, maybe it's like SCP. a maybe it's like a tone like like a vibration like how you uh like you know drag your finger across a wine glass and that's what sort of yeah, calmed it down yeah there's there's kind of an an iffy thing here like i'm i'm not super keen on using like oh there have been like uh, native stories that that have talked about this, and so they tried that. I'm I'm not super keen on that, but that is the idea that um, right. There, okay. there were way there were methods to calm it that have been used, like, and there are stories about it. Um, it's like, oh well, let's give it a try. All right, right? okay. It, I, I, I remember Cthulhu. now. It's very mm -hmm. Cthulhu ancient, like cult sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same sort of idea. Let's see. Plot device crystals. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the contingency measure. The, uh, yeah, the, mm. the crystal go brrr machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they got a bunch of people to, to J.O. and they charged the crystals and then they spun them around mm -hmm. and... Uh, the contingency measure everywhere. is a hypothesized to function like, by utilizing a series of standing harmonic and ultrasonic wavelengths, which have been observed to affect the overall behavior of the Permian Basin superorganism. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Crystal go Let's burr. See, 
Um, basically, they, they, the entirety of Section 4 is just ba basically saying, Anodyne, you fucked up. Like, mm -hmm. you, you got them pumping more than they should have. You and, did like, you not effectively implement internal recommendations to help prevent structural failures to hydrochloric corrosion, you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, th they had this contingency measure in their back pocket mm -hmm. and just kind of never told anyone they were like well um, shit hits the fan and we have nothing else to try yeah try Fuck this it. i guess <laughs> and lo and behold it, it did work it that worked. that probably also combined with the ludicrous amounts of industrial grade of sedatives and uh paralytics being injected into it that there is very little that I cannot achieve with ancient magics and crack. <laughs> <It was laughs> Somebody inject this thing with <laughs> 600 trucks worth of morphine. And Tums, yes. <laughs> Don't forget the Tums. Uh, there were several contributing causes of the July 5th, uh, 2007 incident. Uh, one, decision-making that encourages continued operation of tourism and resource extraction operations despite hazardous working conditions. Two, reluctance amongst employees to use their stop work authority. Recent safety culture surveys performed within research extraction sites indicate that employees have become less willing to use their stop work authority between 2003 and 2006. I'm actually not super sure what that means. Um, I, I think it's a, like, this is dangerous oh. and, like, I, I, I'm going to blow the whistle. Oh, my whoa, goodness. That whoa, is a whoa, lot whoa. of gifts. Holy subs. shit. Drav, thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you for the Holy 50 cow. gifted subs. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I super, super appreciate it. Thank you. I, here, I'll, I'll, I'll emote. I'll emote for you. Yeah. Do, uh, can, do you have a pog? Uh, here. Uh, let let me try. Oh, okay, ability that, to best. stop work for various reasons. I see. I thank you so much, man. Thank you again. Uh, and then uh, they also had substandard oh. equipment maintenance practices. Uh, yes. Mm. Fifty gift subs is a lot. It is. I'll, it I'll is a lot. Off, right? <laughs> yeah. It always. It always feels weird to just like continue huh? <laughs> reading or something. Yeah. It's. It's like. <laughs> um. I. I'm. Yeah. It, it's that weird moment of I want. I want to recognize them and thank them, but also they are giving subs because they like the show. <laughs> and it's like so we we continue. I guess it's there's like a push and pull onward. There. <laughs> we push. Uh, they were bad. Here's incident conclusions. Here's some good stuff. Yes. Uh, the CGR found that the failure of this incident is indicative of a fragmented hazard management approach that has placed the responsibility to implement safety recommendations on stakeholders which stood to benefit from decreased oversight while also incurring financial loss for any safety oversight restrictions placed. Consequences of this cultural attitude surrounding the tourism and resource extraction operations within the Permian Basin superorganism led to the severe underestimation of the capabilities of the organism as well as the capabilities of the systems designed to limit the hazards posed by the organism. Oh my god, Dev, thank you for the another, another 20. Thank you so much. Thank you. Another one. <laughs> another one. Another one. I really appreciate it, man. Jesus. I really do. Thank you. Thank you for supporting a cool streamer that I like. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you read, read. God, that's... Okay, okay, okay. Um, wait, in like y you were on the conclusion, right? At, at uh, six, or you, you were on uh, were the on... incident conclusions? Yeah. Oh, uh, we were yeah, on yeah. five one two. Oh, five one two. Okay. Hey, Got thank it. you for the five Nordic Savage. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Not to be outdone. <laughs> uh, the use of concentrated aconitine without prior study or approval as a fail-safe directly triggered a reactionary response from the organism, which led to the deaths of over 750 individuals. The use I of, like the idea yeah? that the, I like the idea mm -hmm. that these guys basically oh. had like some emergency pocket ketamine. Just in case. <laughs> Speaking of emergency pocket ketamine, fuck? thank you for the 30 gifted subs, Dev. Thank you. I mean, Drev, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I don't know how to thank you enough. I Thank you. 
Juniper, you're going to be able to get so much ketamine. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, well, you can get a conotine instead. That's okay. I'll take some aconitine. Yeah. The it's use the only thing that'll work. of the contingency measure, while effective at pacifying the organism, was similarly employed without prior substantial testing or approval. This lack of communication from anodyne regarding the specifics, theory of operation, and even existence of the artifacts, uh, which are essential components within the contingency measure, directly led to the unsafe and high RPM operation, which fractured the mineral components of the contingency measure. Oh, right! It's a... Uh, uh, they, they use it... Oh, and thank you for the sub, Trev. Thank you. <laughs> They use I, I like it how once Drev, and it broke. I like it. Yeah, I like how Drev gifted a hundred subs and then was like, "Whoops, forgot to get one for myself." <laughs> they broke the contingency measure. At least they fractured it. Yeah, they did. Like they they went too hard. They this was an oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit moment. Yeah, yeah, Just exactly. Just spin it, spin it up. All right. Uh, let me see. Let, let's scroll down and see if there's anything else particularly. Yeah, juicy. I want to say because uh, there was like something like, really juicy. It was a uh, the parts of the creature began emerging uh, between yes. like fifty kilometers away and a hundred and thirty kilometers away, which was like there, I can't remember what state it was. But there was yeah. a um, there was an artist's rendition. Oh, it. do you let have me, it? Let me find it for you. Yes. It, yeah, it was it, it was like a like rounded. spires begin emerging yes, out of it, sort of like this. spines. It's a beautiful piece. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> I believe that. Hold on, that is AI generated, but it gets the nope. point across, this, right? That looks. No, this it's looks... not. It's not. No, it's not AI generated. Are you Th sure? This was. Okay. No, this was made before AI generated images were really oh, like, well, oh, okay. becoming All right. available. It just it looks a lot like Mid Journey, which is why I have to wonder. Um, yeah, it it does kind of have that vibe. Yeah, it's big 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 boy. Oh, uh, Limb Rising near Midland. I I I don't know mm -hmm. exactly what state this was in. Uh, Midland. I I think it's just a town in Texas. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's still Texas. Okay, what? Uh, I don't. I, it's hard for me to visualize what exactly is coming out here. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it is difficult. It's well, yeah, there's a little bit of lore behind it. It's a um, it's someone who survived the disaster, mm. um, drawing or uh, painting a piece based on their experience and what they saw. Oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. very cool yeah it's so it, it does sort of resemble a starfish in the way that it's splayed out by the way like the way that it um its limbs reach out i think it, honestly that makes the most sense to me because it doesn't have uh like a mouth in the traditional sense at least not that we know of right uh it, it has well, the mouth it, is downward if it, if it is there because right they said yeah. that they, they theorized that even though it splays out far it also goes very deep down to like gather whatever food potentially yeah and it has pores that sort of like you know stick out of the ground a little bit well i mean you have to dig down to those but right it's yeah. just a very unconventional body shape mm -hmm. one thing that i was considering about it is maybe it is a an extension of something deeper mm. like an organ that purposefully grew upward to um like it's a part of a much much larger larger organism that is inside of like the mantle. Mm, maybe maybe, it's sort of hard for me to, I guess, uh, wrap my mind around something that would you know be able to survive in the mantle. You know. Right. No. It, it's it's absurd. It's completely absurd. Mm -hmm. Um. But that's like where is it getting all of the energy and the heat? right like it has to be coming yeah it's from be somewhere something. it has to maintain homeostasis somehow mm -hmm. and that's why why i was thinking a lot of the energy that it gets from the mantle sort of gets funneled up into this extra organ that is reaching up into the permian basin yeah maybe that would, like, that like a sense. hand like imagine a hand reaching oh up. little fingies <laughs> yeah it's, it's got it, it it's grabby 
<laughs> it's grabby. It's got little fingers that stuck above the earth briefly. Oh, uh, let's see. He just wants to grab you. He just wants to hold you. Let's see. Um... <laughs> Ah, as of this document, the Permian Basin Recovery and Superorganism Containment Corporation has been granted a temporary permit for continued extraction of bone material and amniotic fluid ballast for research and limited commercial purposes. Womp womp. Bum bum bum. Bro. <laughs> Maybe one day they'll be able to bring back the amniotic fluid Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, uh, as of the revision 2.5 of this document, materials and objects harvested from the retrocognitive material gestation organs, aka gift gardens, will continue at a greatly reduced capacity for the exclusive purpose of research. All such objects shall be stored in a designated and secure offsite facility. Well, we have you're a able to do it. Like first, you were able to say that the first go. That was impressive. What? Retro you, you can't cognitive material gestation or you can't see me, but I'm frowning very hard at you right now. <laughs> no, that was legit. Like I, I was reading it and I was just like, Ugh. oh brain. man, I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me. <laughs> no, legitimately, I read it and my brain skipped like a fucking record. <laughs> Well, we have a conclusion here. A conclusion at the end of the document. Um, we, we could read that right now. Uh, I, I do want to, again, thank you. Thank you for coming on my stream. This was very, very cool. Uh, I There's also a NASA report on the topic. Oh, like a like a like a fake one, or they did like were they humoring them? Like, he he, yeah, sure, we'll write a paper about your fictional <laughs> national park. <laughs> uh, I, I oh, think a fake one. I, I see. I see. Fake. Uh, but yeah, I, I think right after we wrap up the conclusion here, uh, I will probably be ending stream because yeah. I need to actually make a grocery run and get stuff for dinner. Um, oh, valid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let, let's do it. Let's tie it up. Let's, let's give it a neat let's little bow. tie this bad boy up. Lord Aethelstan is playing Outer Wilds right now. If you want to raid him, say less. Ooh. Say, Ooh. oh, hold on. Let me, uh, actually, uh, oops. <laughs> I forgot that was still open. <laughs> Did I have I have I told you Outer Wilds is my favorite game? Like Yeah. Period. Full stop. I think so. It was it was fucking really good. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it it hurty. You it, know, it, it hurty. And when you do the DLC, it will hurty so much more. I I can only imagine. You're man. you are not fucking ready. It's I will I will cry and throw up probably. Uh look, yeah, look. <laughs> if, if if the base game did the same thing to you as it did to me, the DLC is going to just Yeah, I'm excited. Be, be ready. Be I'm excited. Ready. I don't know when I'm going to do Please. it because the DLC is also like 20 hours long allegedly. It's um, um it, it is half again as long as the game. So it, it is it is um I would say half as long as the base game. Mm. Okay. That was that. That's been my experience and the experience of like everyone else I've known that's played it. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Let's do wrap up. Uh. Chat. When we raid. Uh. Lord Athol. Please. No spoilers. Be respectful. You know the drill. Outer Wilds is just that kind of game. You know. Um. Okay. Who? All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll. Would you like to close it out? Uh. Sure. Sure. Read the conclusion. Oh, thank you for the five gifted subs, Nordic <laughs> Savage. Thank you. Uh, conclusion. It's a the war. <laughs> the CGR concludes its recommendations and report with broad advocacy for any such programs which aid aim to better prepare physical as well as social and spiritual infrastructure for the inevitability. <gasps> oh my god, I have the hiccups. <laughs> for the Permian Basin superorganism emerging from dormancy and becoming completely active and ambulatory. The measures and methods described within these recommendations are temporary in their effectiveness while representing the fullest extent of human capability to impact the Permian Basin superorganism. Future studies and capabilities may yield a greater degree of readiness in matters concerning the survivability of a societal encounter with an active and ambulatory Emanus Colossius, but it is unrealistic to believe that mankind will seriously be able to damage or eliminate such an organism. 
Inhabitants of the Western Hemisphere within the U.S. and abroad must come to understand the losses each and every one of us will face and how those impacts will harm the quality of life we enjoy in this unique part of the world. Yeah, they're just trying to keep it asleep. It, it's very Azathothian mm. in that way. Don't, don't wake up. Don't, yeah. don't wake, if just, you wake up, it's playing, all over. Just keep playing those flutes. Just keep <sighs> playing those flutes. Well, I uh, thank you very much for coming on. I'm going to get the raid up and going here. Uh, this, yes. this was really cool. I, I had a lovely time looking over this again with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I had, I had an absolutely fantastic time. My cheeks still hurt. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I've, I've been a big fan of your videos since I was like a teenager. So like, it, it was very, very cool talking to you. Oh, thank you. I the, it, It's been a pleasure joining. And your chat's been very kind, too. Very, very good welcoming. chat. Every, mm. Everyone's just been so welcoming. Yeah, so... Uh, I will, uh, let me, let me kiss my chat on the forehead, mwah, uh, kiss the homies good night. uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it, uh, thank you for coming on yeah. again, I hope you have a very good evening, Frederick. Uh, yeah, you too. And I am going to send you guys away now, uh, you guys know the drill, go get them homies, no spoilers for Aethel, please, be polite! Uh, see you guys <laughs> soon.